It's uh, 7 p.m. We'll call the word of the Conservation Commission. It's December 11th, 2019. Um, we've got a, a full agenda here, so we'll just get moving. 7, 7 p.m., we've got Notice of Intent 270-0714, uh, 135, 139, 149 Howard Street. Um, my understanding is the applicant plans on continuing, or do you have anything you, you want to say this week, I guess? Um, on Street Civil Design Consultants, uh, not a whole lot. We received another comment letter from Horsley Witten, which I think we may have discussed last time. There's only a couple minor comments. Um, we made some planning Thank you. on or the CPDC, I'm sorry, on Monday. And uh, that presentation was very similar to the one we gave to this commission, where it was just kind of this high level overview. They hadn't had a lot of time with the plans yet, but just it's been a while since we were with them, so we kind of brought them up to speed. Uh, no major comments yet, but we're attending the uh, DRT meeting next Wednesday, uh, where we'll get hopefully some department head feedback and then hopefully formal letters after that, and we'll see where we stand. So, uh, we do want the continuance. You know, we don't have really anything new to discuss here tonight, but I figured we'd just come and if there was uh, any questions from this commission, and just to give this update. So that's great. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to continue NOI 270-0714. All those in favor? All those opposed? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice. 701, we'll move on to Notice of Intent 270-0675, 364 Lowell Street. Uh, this public hearing for 270-0675 is now open or reopened. It's being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Wet Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended by the Reading Bylaws, Section 7.1. The hearing will be conducted in the following manner. The applicant will present. Uh, the commission will receive uh, reports from its administrator, technical advisors. The commission will address the, the comments. Uh, will go out to uh, the public. Um, and for all those that haven't seen, I saw people sign in, but there's a sign-in sheet. Um, at this time, I'll ask the commission to introduce themselves from the right. Bob Hayes. David Pinnett. Carl Sacconi. Michael Flynn. Anika, Vice Chair. Anika Scanlon. Uh, Conservation Administrator Chuck Taroni. Right. My understanding is 364 plans to continue as well. I don't think anybody's here from the applicant. Correct, Chuck? Uh, no. Uh, Steve uh, Dodge contacted me last week, and he wanted time to put the plan together. This is for the egress that um, was not approved on the original order of conditions, so he's going to come in. Uh, I did view the basement. I encourage the commission to go to the site visit and see the basement, and you'll find, which, which I found, which was the only way out would be this area. Um, so you need to look around in the basement to find out. There's, there's, there's just other things in the way where access is impossible. Um, but Steve is going to go over that and some other, um, uh, I guess he's going to improve the application in a way that he's hoping the commission will accept. So we're still at the point where it's either going to be a doorway or an emergency exit window. Uh, both uh, would qualify under the, for the building inspector and um, Steve says he's going to come in with some plans and, and, uh, and, and help us uh, understand why he needs the doorway so and he's continued until January 8th so that's going to be on our next site visits to go back out there see presumably they're going to be there to let us in and they are okay. they yeah so uh, so January 7th okay. um, we'll be able to uh, go inside the building and, and see what see what's going on Excellent. do I hear a motion Make a motion to continue NOI 270-0675, 364 Lowell Street. Second. All those in favor? All right, moving right along. We'll go to 702 on our uh, agenda. It's 259-267 Main Street, notice of intent 270-0727. Uh, again, this public hearing will be reopened. Um, this is 270-0727. Uh, 
being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, Mass General Laws, one, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and by the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Um, we'll int introduce from the, from the left, I guess. Sure, uh, Chuck Tarani, Conservation Administrator. Anika Scanlon. Mike Flynn, Vice Chair. Carl Sacconi. David Pinnett, Clubhouse. All right, Chuck, you got a rundown so I'll give an update. Too. So um, I went out to uh, the site with Dave Conwell and uh, Joe uh, from Hancock. Uh, Joe's the engineer, and we looked at the easement that they're proposing a uh, walking path on. And it was only to gather information whether the town would allow a walking path on the easement that uh, would end at, uh, we started Cross Street and would end at um, uh, Main Street uh, right at the end of this, this property, which, is, which is used to be Smith Oil, or currently is Smith Oil. And uh, it would be a nice little cut through uh, for everyone who wants to come down to that side of town instead of walking around. Uh, we also looked at the bank of that stream and uh, discovered it was uh, severely undercut. So they're going to be looking at doing some improvements on that. Um, that and they're going to proposing to clean out some of the loose material that's gathered in the stream without doing any cutting. They just hand by hand pick this stuff up, and they're going to propose um, something around a hundred. Uh, trees and shrubs to be planted on the bank and uh, typically the engineering department doesn't want anything planted next to its easement or on its easement but they allow some vegetation in areas there's some open areas where all the trees are, are missing and you know there's sight lines from one property to another which can be taken care of so they asked that they needed more time to do some survey work and they'll also be back on January 8th with um, a new set of plans and uh, talk to us about what, what the next steps are. Okay. I move we continue the hearing to um, January 8th. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. I'm moving right along. 703 on our agenda. Chuck, does this have a number? Filing number? Steve, does this have a number yet? I'm uh, sorry. Does this have a file number yet? Uh, we just got one by email. Sure. We haven't what, sent anything out yet. What's that number? Uh, 28 7028. Hold on. Sure. Right after me. Probably is. Some stuff. Have that with me. Okay. So we'll we'll move. No, that was me. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's there's chairs on the corner. If you want to work your way over there and just pull them down and get more comfortable. Um, So that's working. <laughs> Good. Good. All right. So yeah, this is a new notice of intent, so you would have to so do that. So this one I'll do. Yeah, Public this hearing this for DEP number 270 blank. Uh, notice of intent for two, this is 0 Haverhill Street, map 29, lot 94, 95 hall, uh, is now open and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Reading Bylaws, Section 7.1. The hearing will be conducted in the following manner. First, the applicant is going to present the proposal. The commission will receive reports from the administrator, the technical advisors, and other town departments will address questions to the applicant. Um, the, I'll then give the public the opportunity to provide comments. You should address your comments to me. Uh, any, there's an attendance sheet if you would like to sign in. 
And at this time, I'll ask the conservation members to introduce themselves from the right. Bob Hitch. You David down. Pinnett. Carl Ciccone. Michael Flynn, Vice Chair. Anika Scanlon. <laughs> and if you don't know by now, Chuck Taroni, <laughs> Conservation <laughs> Administrator. There we go. Do you want to uh, use this to have that stand? All right. Oh, good, thank you. I'll let the applicant uh, go My ahead. name is Steve Erickson from North Environmental Services. What we've got here is two existing lots on Haverhill Street. And what we're proposing are two single family homes. We're requesting a waiver to the 25 foot no disturb and the 35 foot no structure. As mitigation for that, we're leaving undisturbed. 4,400 square feet of area over here. We're using erosion controls and we're infiltrating all of the rooftop runoff out into the front. And as additional mitigation, we are proposing a three foot gravel path that will access uh, the rear property. And we would put a conservation restriction on that rear property. There's 12 acres through here. That land can be donated to the town or otherwise restricted. And that ties in nicely with some of the other properties that the town has, open space parcels. Yeah, so I, I just want to say, so if it, if it so uh, I was actually talking to the applicant a couple days ago, and there was a discussion about um, continuing this, this hearing. So I thought that's where we were going with this, and I didn't have a chance to prepare for this. So I want you to know that I'm unprepared for this because I thought it was going to be continuing. I got an email this morning uh, saying that they are coming in. So, you know, we can just go as far as we can go and you know, talk, but I didn't get a chance to look at this. I think my ticket would be a, just like every other site, we want to be willing to do a site visit um, and see what's, what's going on out there. But certainly it's good to get an intro and we'll be going to the site with some good background. Um, I, don't, I don't know if anybody on the commission has any questions. I, I just wanted to see, yeah. I thought for the general public and for possibly other members of the commission to see uh, an overview as to the expanded uh, neighborhood as to where this is, where the locus is for the surrounding area for this. If you look at this, uh, see our parcel of 12 acres is coming up through here. And we have the green open space areas, and this will tie right into that. It's Timber Next One. Timber Next, right. right. Well, so, that's one of the reasons why I wanted this to be expanded, so you could see how that that 12 acre piece would end up to be contiguous to the Timber Next One. By the, the drawings you have here, you really can't see that. Um, or what else is in that area where it butts up to uh, A Street and all those other small streets that are down the other side. Well, I see I see a building at the end of the, the cul-de-sac. Is that Barney Lane? That's Barney, Barney Circle. Barney yeah. Circle? Yeah. Is there a connection from that lot? What's, what is that lot? Uh, that, there, was a, there are houses there on Barney Circle. So Steve, does this actually provide direct access to Timberneck, or is there still a prop? Is there still a parcel in between? There There's is. a paper street that runs up that long strip. Where's that? Yeah. Right through here, there's a paper street, so they would be able to access right over to the larger parcel. The town owned property, the Paper Street? I think that one I showed you shows the. Uh, the it shows, actually, it shows it as lot 109. 
find it in Lot 109, which is at the, at the, uh, the hammerhead of uh, Bloody Circle. The last house on the left. It, it, it shows here that that's part of that lot. So I guess it wouldn't be. Right, that's privately owned. That is privately owned. So, Steve, just to make sure I understand this, I mean, this will help going into this next one, but so I'm looking at the, the site development plan. You've got the, the strip coming up the right side of the site here, the north side. Yes. And then everything, the 12 acres behind that is what you're saying is the, the developer's willing to offer as conservation restriction? This land right through here, we put a conservation restriction on it. And then the goal of the connection is to get people back to the conservation restriction. And it, it's a good part of the way to Timberneck Swamp, but not actually a direct connection. It's uh, close. I don't think, yes. I don't see an actual yep. connection there. Okay. So, Any other yeah, so how much of that back area that would be conservation restriction, how much of that is already wetland? I don't honestly know. We okay. didn't flag the back area. Right. I know there is some upland up here because we considered trying to get a back lot out there, but the access would be a little difficult. Look at the screen. Anika, that gives you generally a good look on what's wetland. Do you see them out? You have the GIS on there? Well, that's, it's yeah, town that's a, GIS, that's yellow, yeah. which is not as accurate as a field, you know, delineation, but it gives us a sense of yeah. of what it is. Um, so it's it's mostly wet, or it's, it shows mostly as wet, but Timonex Swamp is not submerged, and it's walkable during portions of the year. I'm, so. I'm not saying that people are going to go out there. I don't think anyone goes out there now except for the, the abutters. But it's a piece of property. The value of having that conservation restriction and having that connectivity to Timonex Swamp and this opportunity is, is pretty big. Um, but, you know, you have to look at, you know, in order to get to that point, you need to look at the development. Yeah. So. And... And we're not actually getting true connection. Well, uh, not just legally. Yes. Oh yeah. No. Exactly. It's not. I thought you meant how would people get there, and I was going to tell you about the um, sidewalk on Haverhill Street. Yeah. Okay. So there's, there's I, I think there's there's still a lot to be had here, um, and, and and a lot to look at. You know, most importantly, I think we need to get out there and do our site visit. Um, you know, I, I think originally we're looking to continue because we right, a lot we got a lot of snow a week ago, and we weren't thinking we were going to be able to see a lot of this. Everything melted, and and we got snow again. But I, I think things are going to be clearing up. Chuck, should we? I mean, understanding that we don't have a meeting now, our, our next site visit is truly planned for January seven. Right. Um, have we gone? Have you gone out to the site at all? Have you seen the, I've the been line? To this, I've been to the site. I didn't. I didn't go there to check out the wetland line. Yeah. So uh, I just went to see where it was up, the topography, and how it laid out based on where I thought two houses were going. But they've changed many times since I've been there. There was a lot of um, uh, updated plans. Uh, so is what's before us the most? current up-to-date plans? Yes. Now, I can download the GIS mapping and the digital mapping to see if we can obtain direct access to it. I, I just want to comment. I, I did take an original look um, at this. Um, I looked at the notice of intent right up. Um, two things that jumped out to me looking at this were 
I, I'm disinclined to grant any variance for this property because there's there's building in the no-build zone. Um, and, you know, I think we've been a little too permissive with our variance, just handing out variances. And I think these two lots could potentially fit one house, but I think two houses is really pushing it. Um, and, you know, to me, financial motivation is not a reasonable motivation under the Wetlands Protection Act. So, you know, I'm trying to look at it from the wetlands point of view, mm -hmm. and that's where I stand on that. Um, another thing I just wanted to highlight that I read in the notice of intent was uh, there were two soils um, mapped according to the Soil Conservation Service survey uh, for this property, and one of them was a was a um, was there was a deer field and a Freetown series. Um, and the Deerfield series, which looked to be mostly the buildable land, um, was, was characterized as having a seasonal high water table at 18 to 36 inches, uh, which really makes me question, you know, how buildable is this lot if the Soil Conservation Service puts their water table in the buildable area? Um, at 18 to 36 inches. You know, are we talking um, about wetland or, you know, um, you know, are we talking about uh, basements? Um, are these gonna be slab on grade houses? Um, so, so those were the two, those were the two biggest things that stood out to me. I think, from my perspective, Anika, I think the point is taken. Uh, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I want to reserve any decision until I actually get to see it. Of course. Um, yeah, we got a lot more looking to do. Yeah. Any other comments? <clears throat> so I, I wanted to, so I, you know, Mark Hall came in a bunch of times, and I actually talked to Jack McQuilkin about this, and, you know, I'm, a lot of information is not coming out about what the applicant's going to do. I just feel like I'm not the person to help out the applicant. And, but I will ask, why aren't we talking about the fill to create the 35-foot setback? Is that something that has been, you're not doing anymore? Or is that? What's the question? What does that mean? So you're showing, you're showing right here that you're 20 feet away, and Anika is saying she's, gonna grant a, she's not going to grant a variance for this. But what I understood was you wanted to fill create that 35 foot and that's why you're creating this wetland here and I don't think this came up we were like, going no to talk about that we were going to fill that was, that was an, but DEP policy plan. won't allow us to okay the policy is avoid minimize and mitigate yep. so I can't do a discretionary filling the only time I can fill a wetland is if I got a limited project so I can't put uh, fill in the wetland to meet that amounts to a fairly arbitrary setback of 25 and 35 feet. I just know for a fact that DEP would deny that. I've tried it before. So the, the area that's hatched here, just to that point though, Chuck, is so all of that is proposed to be, it's called un, remain undisturbed, but you're not proposing to create new wetland. Correct. No. <clears throat> and keep in mind, these are pre-existing lots. And these lots date back to the 60s. So what is that area that says re remain to be undisturbed? What is it? Why is it? It's wooded. So, you, right, so you're, that's going to be part of the conservation restriction or, or just an area that's... We could, but we were just going to leave it undisturbed. Okay. But it's entirely wooded over there. And that's part of the mitigation to it because we are disturbing the 25 to 35 feet. We were looking at leaving a larger area of undisturbed vegetation over in that area. But, but not taking something, not cutting a tree down is not mitigation. But just just because you're not building here does not mean that that, that doesn't mean that's mitigation. Well, it's a lot somebody's been paying taxes on since the 50s, as far as I know. It's 
60 years of paying taxes, so I think they kind of wanted to some kind of return on it. That's that's fair, but if they wanted to, if they were going to take something down there, they'd have to meet all the requirements of the Wetlands Protection Act. Still, it's still within the jurisdiction. Saying, well, we're, we're, we just won't touch this area. I don't know that that I would consider that mitigation. So I move we continue. Before, before that, I just, any, any other comments from the the commissioner or chair? Yeah, no. in the audience. And, no, and then, I'm, I'm still curious why DEP wouldn't, like, you couldn't pick one of those areas and so when does it become non-discretionary filling? What, what, what's the threshold? About 10 years ago, they came out with their policy of avoid, minimize, and mitigate. Mm -hmm. And about that time, it came to the point where the only time I could fill a wetland was if I was going for a limited project filling. They would not allow a discretionary filling on any lot. Interesting. I don't know if I can get that in writing from them. No, it's it's but it's fine. I'm not asking for you to. I you know DEP policy is is what it is. Uh, if you, yeah, it, it looks like that twenty foot setback, and I don't even know what the other one is. Contour that second lot looks like it's even closer. There's no well, that's 20 foot setback from the, the building. Generally, we've considered the driveway part of this as well. Mm -hmm. The driveway is getting much closer. Yeah, the driveway is closer. And then, yeah, so there's a deck, I, looks like on lot. One that looks like it's much closer as well. I'll open it up to comments from the public. Uh, please state your name and Marino, 114 Hable Street. I don't like people building a house or a housing. But this pathway you're talking about, where is it going? The, the um, pathway to the 12 acres. <laughs> right now it goes back to the 12 acres. Um, and yeah, but where, where is it going to be over here? On the right side of them houses or on the left side yeah. of them houses? It would be Please. right along here, sir. Yeah, well, let me say this. You know, I mean, this is 2000. 19 and everything happens you're gonna have a path where's everybody gonna park their cars to go up that path that's number one number two who's gonna walk up the path I'm not saying that everybody's bad but let me tell you I got a 10 year old granddaughter I got little kids next door to come and play in my yard I have to build a 20 foot fence so that they can play because I'm afraid in this day and age you don't know who's going to walk anywhere or what they're going to do when they see little kids. Now you can say, you know, sit down, you know what the hell you're talking about. But I think I do know what I'm talking about. That would be, that would be really bad. Bad. I mean, there was a guy a month ago on the street playing parker pool. Broad daylight, they caught him. On Ryan's Circle. On broad daylight. So that doesn't mean, what if the same guy was at the path? And she's a little girl and two little boys, but now what? Oh, jeez, I didn't know that. In the meantime, he did something stupid, and we all have to pay. Plus, is it, I don't know too much about conservation land. I know there's one right beside me, and there's water all year round in that land, because I'm right there with it. Where's the pot going to go? On top of the water? So the goal, some of the goal is to preserve this land so it's not developed. And by putting a conservation restriction on it outside of the path, it, it's, it's going to preserve it. It's going to be there forever. And that part is, is good and it's kind of what you want. It's just this, this path. It's the path and yeah. who's going to walk up the path? I would also hear that there's no park being proposed. No. no, no, not so much park. 
but there's going to be people once they find a pathway well, where's it going to go? And then who knows who's going to walk? And where are they going to park their car to walk up the pathway? Havel Street's a horror show to start with. Barney Circle is unbelievable. And, I, and I'm and i living on the corner, and I can tell you, I've been there 26 years. They turn around. They come in my driveway. Everybody, and they just turn around. And they don't even care who's in it and what. This is one of my concerns. You know, as for the houses, that's whatever. But it's that pathway that gets me because... They're going to be going there at midnight. They're going to be assigned. Nobody in here after 8 o'clock. Nobody reads signs today. They just go and do what they want. You know what I'm saying, Mr. Flynn? I don't want to know. No, I'm just... I'm just... Thank you for your comments. That's my own personal thought. Any other comments? Yeah, my name is Robert Conley. I live in Five Army Circle. I have a lot of concerns. I have some concerns about the house itself being built on wetlands. I have... Um, I don't think it's really been discussed yet, or maybe I don't understand totally that path. How far does that path go into the wetlands? Does it go behind all the houses there? So the Chuck, if you could bring up the, distance. The, the plan. That other one back? I, I guess I don't understand why they even need a path, because it's all wetlands. Why, why do they even need a path there? So it's private property. It would only carry it What's in a short distance. It would be up for the town if they wanted to, to carry it further. Well, that's where I'm getting at. Yeah. You could build, you could make it further. And that follows all along other people's houses where people be walking back and forth in their lands. And I could sit here for an hour and tell you all the issues we have on Barney Circle. I'm worried about parking, like Dennis mentioned. Worried about all the people, if you do decide to extend that path in there, that's the start of it, right? And you just mentioned you could extend that in. That would be a big problem. I think it should be left undisturbed, you know? Um, where are people going to park? We already have such problems on Barney Circle. I could sit here for an hour. So pa parking is uh, the purview of the select board, and we're not, I mean, it's a public street, and we're not deciding where people are parking and any kind of access. There is a we're sidewalk. We're addressing but, that. Yeah, but, but if you wanted to tell, like, make your case about problem parking, it would go to the select board. Say no yeah, parking we're on here. The January 7th sure. So the only thing I would say, Chuck, though, that, that I do agree is if, if you know, the idea of this commission accepting this as mitigation is understanding value to that connection, and if there's the access is going to create issues because nobody can get there because there is no accessibility or people can't park on Havel, or, then I, I think it's worth understanding. You know. Who is going to be accessing? How are they going to access it? Um, you know, there's sidewalks there that, that people do walk in neighborhoods. We, we have a lot of these where there is no parking and they do get access, but it is worth at least understanding. I mean, all, while parking is not necessarily in our purview, the, the ability to access this trail, I, I think is, because ultimately we're we're going to be deciding whether this is a mitigation that we want to accept. It's the same thing as Hunt Street. Right now, parking exists. Right now, it's a, it's a sidewalk. Yeah. I don't understand maybe your comments because it's viable now. But so that's that's a good example. Hunt Street, where there is, that's a similar the thing. The neighbors wanted to go to the select board and find out if they could restrict parking. Yeah. That wasn't up to us. We went through with that trail because, for a lot of reasons, but, you know, access, access to public publicly funded open space you know is important is important no one yeah why would no one would ever fund it again if you can't have access to it yeah you know in all due respect i understand what you're saying but i think that's definitely going to change the dynamics of our neighborhood with the access to that land we can't do anything on our land and here we are we're going to build a path on wetlands i don't understand that you know what i mean and these houses need variants for the front the back the sides it, it, why are we putting that there? Leave it like it is. You know, that's how I feel, and there's a lot of other neighbors here that feel the same way. Sure. So the so the applicant is going through the process to find out if it if it will work. The variance exists through his developing his his uh, his his plans. Right. And I understand. So that. and then we have to go through that process. This is private property, all of it. So they could put a path in it if they wanted to. Okay, but all I'm saying is I want to go on the record as. These houses, if they get built, this pathway gets done, 
and then the town and the conservationists decide to extend that path, you're going to impact our area immensely. We've lived there for, most of us have lived there for over 20 years, and it's a big detriment to us. And I think everybody else in here feels the same way. I'm just voicing my opinion. Sure. I'm not angry. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on because we really couldn't get any answers. Um, so currently there are no paths into Timbernex Swamp. It's mainly used by the abutters. There are no plans to put any paths in Timonex Swamp, but to I know, accept... We abut, we abut Timonex Swamp. Sure, so you know that. So um, that's not on the list, but, but to collect open space is something the commission wants to do. And to not be able to go there like and the survey it could be, could be an issue. The path makes sense to us. How many people are actually going to go out there? I have no idea. Usually no one really does. What about homeless people? I know you have problems on paths in the town now with homeless people, kids partying, drugs, drinking, trash. We have a lot of concerns. So I'm just bringing them up. There's a lot there, yeah. You know, and, so it's, and we're really worried about it. We have enough There's many access to points to, to Timberneck Swamp, though. It's not, this path is not going to create its own separate problem than anything else out there. I mean, the neighbors seem to be very, uh, you know, if you're watching it as much as you say you are, then that those issues won't happen. You know, if someone's out there with a tent, call the police. You know. my, my issue is, why do we even want to even approach that? Let's, it's fine now that we this. Let's leave it. It's private property, and the town doesn't have a say whether a private citizen puts a path on his property. So it's just part of this does project. It belong to? Does it belong to the town when it's built or the people that own the house? It belongs to the people that own the house, but there will be an easement. But So we're building a path for people that own a house. <coughs> they own a path to the wetlands. They I actually haven't I even bought it yet. The of that. They haven't even bought it yet. I so we don't even know who those people are. But as, so there's many, so back to, instead of all that, there's many hurdles that this applicant has to get through to get his project through, and that's that's what he wants to do. And he's trying to say, I'm willing to do uh, conservation restriction, I'm willing to give access to the bag, I'm willing to create a, a, a wetland or leave a spot undisturbed that could have been disturbed for lawn. And we're just going through the process now. We need to understand what's, what's happening. And there are a lot of hurdles, and you know, this commission understands that because we've done it in other spots that that paths have like a fear factor to them uh, when they didn't exist before. So we understand well, that. It, so it was originally two lots or was it four lots? You got the two house lots and now you got the two pieces of wetland. So did the builder redesign the lots and then donate the land to the town? Is that how it went? No, so it, on this plan. Right. So this is all proposed, but Steve, can you answer the lot question? It's mm -hmm. always been two lots right there. But that's not. He would subdivide it into three, I guess. And then he gave the land to the town. So did he give no, the land not, to the it's town? No, it's a conservation houses? restriction. It doesn't. The yeah. town doesn't receive ownership. It belongs to the owners of the parcel, and it just has uh, restrictions on it, such as you can't build on it. It's a registered deed. No, I, I understand. I'm not it, trying to give anybody a hard time. I mean, I, I think, think that part everyone agrees with, with is a good thing. My, my own so, opinion. Someone else I would hope so, anyways. Well, the other thing, too, is the owners will benefit because you don't pay taxes on land if you put a conservation restriction on it. Okay, hi. I'm, I'm, I, Go ahead. I guess I state my name and my address. Correct. So I'm Connie Mark Wilson. <clears throat> uh, my husband, Joe, is here. We live here, and in 1994, when we purchased the property, we were told that our backyard was conservation land. Is it still conservation land? I, 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 is it? Well, we don't have so, to, if, unless, a, unless you're proposing a project and someone, a professional wetland scientist went out there and delineated the backyard we wouldn't be able to tell you whether it was conservation land or not. Um, it's private property, and it has, this is, this layer where you see this hash marks mm -hmm. is a, uh, a data layer from Mass Department of Environmental Protection, mm -hmm. and they did a flyover, and they're saying it's likely that this, these areas are wet. When you get to the very edges, mm -hmm. 
that's where it's not very really accurate. But generally speaking, I would say that there's a dry area in the back here, and it looks like your lawn is would show that it's mostly wet, but it's also pinched in between two wetland areas. So I think there's it's a possibility that it's not. So who, who sure. told you this? Sure, cool. So I think it's worth separating that there's a difference between conservation land yeah. and <laughs> wetlands. Uh, and and I, I think that's an important separation that, that doesn't always get understood, that you know that what we're looking at right now in the lines and what we're talking about as far as what's back there is wetlands, but it's it's private property. It's owned by someone, um, oh. and, and so therefore it's not necessarily conservation land. Okay, I don't know if that it was that case in 1994. Things things may have changed, but my point is that uh, we respected because we spoke to the conservation at the time of building, and we were given certain instructions about what you could do and what you couldn't do and also that the town was trying to preserve the nature, the deer roaming around, the fact that it is wet and we had to do certain things to keep it dry in our basement. And there could be shiftings going on when you build a new structure. And so that's a, a concern. Also, when this was brought forward, there was this notion that there was something going further past this land. And so when I look out my back window today, I see beautiful greenery and trees. And I also know when we built, we respected the conservation, I assume it was the conservation committee, said don't cut down certain trees and whatnot. So we respected that so we could keep the beauty and whatnot. So I just don't know how those certain standards are being maintained in today's situation. So, so an important part of this this process, and, and this is kind of what we've been getting at, is is to perform a site visit. The the applicant has delineated where they see the wetland is. They have the wetland scientists. You guys gone out there and figured out where the wetland line is. Part of our one of our next steps beyond just understanding what's developed is is going out there and checking that line and making sure that we agree with it. So one of our next steps will be to make sure we understand where the wetlands actually are. Those resource areas are, there. there's standards that have to be maintained associated with those resource areas. And that's, that's when, when you received a comment, that's likely what you heard, and that's part of the process of what we're going through now as part of this application. Mm -hmm. Just to make a comment, when you're trying to explain the difference between conservation and wetland. <coughs> Wetlands are controlled because they exist, and there are boundaries that are set to protect people from encroaching them. Anybody can own land, wet or dry. So if you want to turn dry land into conservation, just owning it doesn't do that. You have to deem it as being conservation land. You want to preserve it. There are organizations that buy up acres and acres of land and put it in land trusts and conservation trusts so nobody can ever develop it. But that may be what people have just said, oh yeah, this is conservation land. Maybe because it, it could be developed. But I got a question for you. Who shovels your driveway? <laughs> You mean that? You mean that long strip? Good <laughs> job. <laughs> Any other comments? Go ahead. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, so I'm Pete Mr. Gallery. I live at 15 Vine Circle, and uh, big issue to me is the path. Uh, I'm really worried about the security of two small kids that kill them right now. We go outside. We play basketball. We play Circles, people behind us in Pittman, the same thing, right? Um, when we moved in uh, some years back, we had uh, someone down the street coming, meeting someone else, um, selling drugs all the time, right? So we had an issue with people selling drugs. Two months ago, we had someone parking right in front of the circle, taking care of himself in the middle of the day, right? You know, so, you know, not just the parking issue, things of that nature, and we're taking that up with, the, with the other board. Everyone's been great about that, you know, so, you know, we really appreciate that, but, you know, towards this, right? We're really worried about the safety, you know, being the impact to our kids. You know, I'm already watching my kids when they're outside. I'm with them, my wife's with them, right? You know, we're already worried as it is, people coming around, turning around, parking, taking business calls, right? You know, I just recently actually put the ring, you know, for my doorbell, and I'm sitting at work, and every, you know, it seems like every 15 minutes, it's going off, going off, going off, someone's coming and turning around, you know? The people are parking there, taking calls, and business calls. 
some people are nice. I walk out there, I'm like, listen, I just want to make sure you're okay, right? And they'll come back to me, hey, I'm okay, I'm just, you know, making a call, I'm off, fine, can I help you, right? Other people are more belligerent about that, you know? And they won't roll down the window, they won't even you know, acknowledge me, right? So, having issues with people coming in and out, driving around, staying in, not leaving, like, listen, we all have kids over here, I know who you are, you need to leave them alone, right? If you need a park, go around the corner, you have high ride, you have Dunkin' Jones, you have a big parking lot over there, right? So you try to be nice to people as much as you can, right? But people is coming in and out, they're parking, they're taking their time, right? You have people selling drugs, you have people sitting there taking care of themselves in the middle of the day, right? So, honestly, you know, I understand what you guys are trying to do, and it's great that you're trying to do that, right? And, 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 and serve that, right? And that's fantastic, right? But on the flip side, also here, there's a way we can do both of this, right? You know, where, you know, you can do that also, you know, not go the path either, you know? And, and, you know, so we're really worried about security of our kids. A lot of kids on Friday, we're up here playing all the time. Pittman, right behind us, the same thing. You know, and everyone on Pittman, they feel the same way as we do. You know, so everyone's really worried about, you know, the kids as it is. We had homeless people in the woods already, you know, was recently sleeping in there, making tents. So, you know, we have a lot going on as it is, you know, so we're really not trying to add to it. You know, we're we, you know, so. Thank you. You know, there's, there's already challenges, you know, a lot of challenges as it is, you know, so please don't add to it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other comments? There are none. Yeah, I have a question. Chuck, right. you might be able to address this. Because these lots predate the zoning in the town, does that make the orientation of these houses and setbacks to the current zoning regulations moot? I know that's happened in other places in town already. So, David, I could not answer that question. I know this. I know this has to go through. You know, CPDC and zoning. A lot of time on my hands and I read the zoning bylaw but I, I don't uh, I don't know the answer to that question um, so Dave do you have a reason for asking just looking at the setbacks and the in the request for the variances if if the setbacks as they've written in the the explanation for request for variance if these the setbacks were not as it's stated now in the current <coughs> setbacks because of the age of the lots. Um, there's a potential that these houses could be reconfigured for their shape and their setback that might bring them within the wetland setback. That's the only reason why I asked that. So we, we had a recent rewrite of our zoning regulation so I didn't know how that might in so, impact this wetland regulations yeah as well. I think that's that's a specific question I don't have the answer to so overall I, I think there's still a lot to, to see here um, and, and talk about I, I do want to make sure we get to site visit scheduled and, and what I don't necessarily want to do is wait till January 7th and if snows two feet on January 5th and we can't get out there again for another who knows how long. Um, so I'm wondering what's the commission's flavor for trying to schedule something in the next week or so. Not during the week of Christmas, but um, so the next two weeks. Because I think we're going to have, we're going to be able to see things in the next week and a half. <coughs> next Tuesday, Tuesday, next Monday. Steve, Steve, do you want this as well? Are we going to go by ourselves? Yes. Um, let's find a date and see if Steve can can be out there too. Saturday is supposed to be 56 and rainy. I don't know if that helps. Can you do early Tuesday? Yeah. How early can we get out there? Tuesday is supposed to be snow. It's supposed to snow again? On Tuesday, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tuesday. I mean, it's warming up, and it's going to be rainy this weekend. Fifth high 56, high 47 Saturday and Sunday. It's the next best window for the next week. Supposedly, if the forecast is right. Don't say it. Ellis? Just 
work with the best Everything. information we have. <laughs> we just do the best it's we can. Zealous, zealous, zealous. Mon Monday, 37, Sunday. So yeah, it could be it could be a Monday. Monday? If it's Maybe it's Monday morning. It's crazy, but I, I mean, that's for me. That's because <laughs> only because it gets going to get dark at four, so I can't do four thirty. It's too gray. I could do four thirty, but it's going to get dark. So. <sighs> I'm really right. Oh, a flashlight. I get a headlamp. I'll give you a headlamp. <laughs> <laughs> I'd Steve, like to walk with Steve. Steve, and I'd like Chuck to be. I'd like Chuck to be there. Steve, be available the sixteenth. Seven's probably too early. Steve, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah. Be to, I wouldn't be able to do seven. Yeah. Um, I'm available between ten and two on Monday. I can shoot for noon if I try to be in. Shoot home when they're only in work. So. Is he, Steve? So twelve you on Monday. Are you available Monday? Monday? Noon on Monday. Castle is available anytime. Okay. Is everyone available between Monday morning? Between ten and morning? two. Monday at noon. Monday at noon. I'm available at noon at this point. Everyone else okay with that? Yeah. yeah. I can do that. Hour. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'll bring you the sandwich. Can I have PB&J? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> All right. So Monday, 12. Um, go ahead. It's Theo Carmo, and I drew the short straw tonight. There is a list of bulleted concerns for the board they wanted to present uh, with signatures, so I can just kind of drop it off with you. Yeah. Could you, could you email that could to you us? Email could you email it to you? Yeah. So, so if you email it to Chuck, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll That's get it part of the public record. All right. Any? Uh, I, I just have one more question. I'm sure. sorry to be being. Huh? Do I, I just want to understand it right? Is it's private land, but when they build the houses, is the land going to get donated to the town? No. Because, no. Okay. But no, did I a, did I understand when you said? I'm just trying to understand it's, that. It's a deed restriction. Okay. Now so I understand. so it's a so the private owner will file a a marked you know meets and bounds description tied to their registered on that deed that restricts the use very specifically for a very specific area marked for conservation restrictive use only what, what's you, but mr commissioner did, did you say or did i understand it correctly if they make that path to the edge of the property that later on the town could extend that so what's no one said that what's included it, as part of it, that it, it did. What's included as part of that is an easement, essentially on the on the property to get back to that that restriction area. So what what would be included as part of that conservation restriction would also be an easement on the on the property yeah. is what they're currently proposing. I, I and and part of that easement, yeah. the reason for for it being an easement is we don't want a future owner coming in and saying, you know, it, well I know I know somebody else agreed to it, but I don't want to agree to that. It, it would both the the restriction and the easement would be part of the deed. And that, that easement is for that path. But a lot of that information we do not have, we have not received anything about that yet. Yeah. I was just trying to understand. We, we don't know. I'm a simple person. <laughs> I think the only thing I said about going back there is if you have a conservation restriction, you have to uh, walk the property and make sure no, one's, no one's encroaching in the path and having access to it through this path, Chuck, uh, we've got one more comment. Helps us. What's that? Oh, we've got one more comment. Go ahead. Hi, guys. My name is Maha Mehmed. I live at 105 Mike. Central Street. I have um, one concern that just wasn't brought up. So um, we haven't gone to this yet, but if there was potential construction, have we talked about um, some of the safety concerns that we have with construction? Haverhill Street is busy as is. We have enough accidents on Haverhill Street and in the rotary. So between that two, there's so much going on. Even currently, it's such a busy street that if we were to have landscapers or some sort of work going on, they're actually not allowed to park on Haverhill Street. Even with a cone, they're not allowed to do that. And we were told by officials that that's not possible anymore. So how, how do they propose construction on such a busy street when landscapers are not even allowed to park on that street on the side of Haverhill Street? Um, well, when they're not the allowed to park on that. They'll park on the property as much as they can. There are trees on that park. Well, they'll, they'll move them. I mean, they obviously have to have access to the land. Yeah, so is all the staging equipment going to be floated on Bonnie Circle when they're building this? 
Well, I would assume they put it on the property as well. But it's not going to happen. I have trouble believing that there's going to be no disruption to the street during any type of construction. So that's that's Mike. Come on. This the, a lot of these things that are coming up is not sure. what conservation does. Um, we don't talk about. But we we don't have any right to restrict someone from working on the street. Um, and not to park in Barney Circle. I mean, it's a public street. So we really have to look at something that's going to alter the resource area and make sure that it meets our, our regulations. Um, so, and again, it, it's, it, I'm just <coughs> stating this. It's not where my, my heart is. I, I hear what you guys are saying, that a conservation restriction on a piece of property that's close to Tabernacle Swamp for that connectivity is, is enticing for the commission. There has to be a review period. There's no access to this property except for this proposed path. Now, maybe it's an area at the end of the day, at the end of this process, that it's not open to the public and that it's there for, um, you know, commission use or something like that so we can review. I, I don't know. <coughs> That's what's going to happen during this meeting and we're going to decide how, you know, how important this part of the puzzle is to, you know, yeah. the rest of the project. But, but parking and Varney Circle and whether people use it or not or someone's making a phone call on Varney Circle, that's not really what we are here for tonight. And it's we're just it's trying to relate. Quick... We're just all trying right, to relate right, that right. It, it's going to impact that. Okay, guys. Yes. So we've heard from the community. We've heard from yeah. the board and the administrator. I think we have. Do I hear a motion at this point? I, I think we've heard all that we're going to. So we were going to pick. So Monday at twelve. Is Monday at twelve is site visit. For site visit. Okay. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. Thank you. So we are continuing this to uh, January 8th. Jan so January 8th is our next meeting. Uh, when do you it, it's Wednesday night. Uh, it'll be at the same location, 7 o'clock. Uh, a couple days before the meeting, it'll be posted what, where it is on the agenda. Um, you can oh. take a look what time. <laughs> I can't guarantee That's what everybody says. I can't guarantee you will be first. Everybody was. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Please remember there's a sign in sheet if you didn't have a chance to sign in. I put my ex. Senior citizens. It would be lovely to come to a conservation meeting. Thank you. On happier terms. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Just trying to preserve the beauty. <laughs> Okay. I'm getting you a stopwatch. I'm really in. <laughs> First, I'm getting you a stopwatch. He's got a learning curve. No, I'm not going to give him a learning curve. <laughs> I will. If I'm going to stop someone, it's going to be you. <laughs> Can you put 15 minutes on it? Welcome to the fiery ground. Yeah. That's yeah. I was <laughs> shocked. I was all ill. Well, I should have figured that was going to be the hardest. Oh, did I, uh, did I, what was it? Because I said, <laughs> what do we? I mean, I'm okay with talking about conservation stuff, but you were just saying, leave me off. No, I don't no, want no. to Whatever. This is me. <laughs> That's why I figured it time. So, I'm going to come my one. The opinion of when we're accepting something, the opinion of the community on accepting something else is important. All right. Uh, we're moving on. No, we have it's a learning curve. Fire. 715, RDA, 2019-15, off uh, strap okay. Not all the way. Not all the way. Sorry. Not all the way because it's public. So what public. you can do is put the, Not, the sign on the door? You can't close it all the way because it's public. And if sign you close it all the way. Can you just put that on the door handle? I've got my issues. Interesting issues. Just, just like Ford has closed it all the way before, which has been really no easy. Well. Let's hope it doesn't give the appearance of being a closed. Get that time. It's been an issue before. All right. That's all I'm saying. RDA 2019 15 off Stroud Ave, map 4344. Um, open it up to the applicant. This is a 
Thank you. I'm Bill Sullivan from the Town Forest Committee. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come in again. We came in in last February, the first time, and then most of you were on the. Uh, most of you were on the sidewalk that we had in May to talk about uh, the, a pilot project to thin would be. I'll try to do some selective thinning within the town forest to improve the, the health of the town forest. So as this is coming up. Next. <clears throat> so a couple of different areas that are being proposed and we discussed at our, our sidewalk. This first one, this is the council ring. And you can tell by the, the dead trees here that we have a kind of a serious problem there. They've been marked with a big orange X by the town to come down. Uh, this area is not being used now. It's, uh, it's, there you can obtain a permit, groups can obtain a permit to use this area, scouts or whatnot, ready wreck, but it's now off limits because of this, the, uh, the hazard associated with these dead trees. And that problem isn't just around the council ring. It extends to a, a number of parts within the town forest. This area, you can see, this, these trees used to have pine needles essentially all the way up and down. Now, they're at the crowns, which is an indication that they're in very poor health. And a lot of that, if you go to the next one, has to do with the fact that this is really not a very natural looking forest because the trees are so close together. It was planted in the 1930s, much of it was, as a plantation. And for many years it was thinned, and th they've come in, they would remove a bunch of the trees and then replant them. It hasn't been done for decades, and so as a result, we have kind of a monoculture up in, in the areas that we're looking at thinning, and that's not healthy. Next one. The other thing we have going on is invasive, a couple of different invasive species. <coughs> the other one is probably the the biggest problem that we have, and that's something else that we hope to address under this project. <coughs> Next. Okay, so in 2010, uh, the, the town uh, had a forest management plan prepared, looking at the health of the forest, and the report talked about the all ages management. So there are three age classes, seedlings and saplings, uh, smaller trees, four to nine inch in diameter, and then the more mature trees, a large diameter. The healthiest forests have all three. Uh, I say that we, the town forest, much of it was planted as a plantation in the 30s, and you can tell by looking at the rows and rows of, of pine trees. Uh, so, this because of this kind of monoculture situation and their age and the density, it makes the trees vulnerable to droughts, disease. Red pine scale is a problem. Red pines, you know, were planted. They really belong in a more northern climate. They don't really fare well here and are not as healthy in this climate, especially as, as the, the climate warms. So the plan at the time was to conduct some selective remo tree removal to get that all ages balance established. Next shot. So the current effort, we have retained a forester, the Town Forest Committee has retained a, a certified forester to develop a pilot thinning project. And the next, uh, not yet, but when I get to the next slide, I'll kind of zone in on where it is, but it's really a couple of areas. Of the 300 acres, we're talking about 4.5 acres. So it's really a pilot thinning project. So the idea being to thin out some of these so to allow sunlight, because there are saplings there. They just need sunlight to grow. And so because this, the forest is so densely plant, uh, planted, it's hard for the light to get down to them. So by you know, removing them will be able to get uh, you know, light down to the understory and to allow those trees to grow. And then we'll also we'll do some buck thorn removal as a sort of an add-on project. Uh, next one. So this is the town forest uh, map, the trail map. The two areas we're talking about doing, this is around the council ring, and then there's another area just to the south of that. So, what we'll do is by having a logger come in, this top item 
we had talked about uh, on a sidewalk the, the benefits perhaps of, of putting a timber mat on the causeway. Uh, actually, Chuck, could you back up one slide? So there is a, uh, the, so this is the compost area here coming down the hill towards this, there's a, this uh, causeway, you know, that, that, uh, between the wetlands that links these two upland areas. Um, it's, you know, in the spring and when it gets wet, there are ruts and things. But so what we had thought about doing when we did the sidewalk in May was what are we going to do to you know, keep the truck wheels from doing damage to that causeway? Well, things have taken longer than expected, and so now we're looking at doing this in February, March, when that, the, the likelihood of damage from rubber tire trucks is, is much, much less. If you could jump to. So the, uh, that's my final point. So, so the, the tip, what we'd like to talk about right now maybe is have some discussion with you is whether this timber mat is even necessary since we think that the impact of trucks on that causeway when the ground is frozen solid would be negligible. So the idea is that the trees have already been marked. If you go out in the town forest now, you'll see blue marks about that big. And in addition to the orange ones in the council so the, the, the logger would come in and they will, they'll drop the trees. We'll, I'll show you a picture of the spell of buncher it's called. Then they use a skitter to pull those down trees. And I forget which of you was the, the logging person. Yeah, so you can jump, feel free to jump in. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. They said jump. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, and then bring it, the logs either to a chipper for like, for example, the dead trees. They have no value, they'll be chipped. Uh, some of the smaller ones that don't aren't usable as logs would be chipped also. Uh, and then they'll also, the ones that are usable as logs, will be put it on onto trucks, and then they will be hauled away. Total of 665 trees over this four and a half acres. So, to give you a sense of the, the, the total number. Next one. So this is one type of the, the fellow puncher. Kind of grabs the base, the chuck cuts the tree, and then drops it down. Next. This shows a, a skitter. It, it grabs the, the trunk here, and then it, it drags it. But again, we think because it's going to be in February, March, uh, that we're not expecting to have any adverse impact. Most of the work, and um, well, I'll get to the, the the resource map that'll show. You know, obviously your keen interest would be in in the buffer zone, but the majority of this is not in the buffer zone. Next. <coughs> so it's a little hard to tell, but some of these these. Are, Shots show the, uh, the blue marks, that uh, so that it'll be very clear that uh, we know which trees the log is to take down. Excellent. And then you know the frozen ground. That's a very different thing than we saw in May, and so uh, really makes this a, a really an ideal time. Next. So in the RDA, which do you all have that? Okay, so this is a part of that, and it shows then where yeah. the, uh, the area is where it's buried. So the blue being the buffer, you can see in here, there, that's where it is in the buffer zone, and along in here too. So there's our appli the application. Um, so the, we're requesting uh, approval for the project, right. and uh, we have a number of steps to go through yet. The next step would be there'll be a public meeting just to brief the public on what's going on so people don't get a lot of calls about what's happening. Uh, we need to finalize the bid documents with any conditions that you all would would apply to, to this project. We'll put it out to bid and hopefully award the contract, <clears throat> do the work. Then after this is done, uh, we're, we're have arrangement with a, a Boy Scout that's doing an Eagle project. And to, uh, to do some uh, removal of buckthorn in the pilot area and to also to plant some native species. So it all kind of fits, meshes together pretty well, but we're, we're a little bit tight on time, which is hard to believe when I was here in February. It seemed, oh yeah, we'll get this done in no time, but as things happen, we're a little concerned now that we really want to get this out to bid as quickly as we can so that, you know, that's going to take a month. Uh, we're looking at, well, you know, and a, end of January, and we want to get the work done in February while the ground is still frozen. Yeah. 
you're tight. <laughs> we are. We are. Yes. Yes. Uh, um, right. Any questions from the commission? Um, I yeah, I took a look at this. Um, um, I was looking at the um, the cutting plans that you've provided <clears throat> with us. I, I appreciate the documentation. I thought it was um, really helpful. So one of your plans has vernal pools identified on it. Um, and another one has sort of a variety of stand description areas right. on it. Um, and I guess one of the first things I want to talk about is the vernal pools. So two vernal pools have been identified, mapped on either side of the Dyke Causeway. I'm sorry, Nick, did you, which one has the vernal pools on it? Um, the Town Forest Cutting Plan Resource Areas. The red dots. Got it. So the red dots are the vernal pools. Um, and I think work in February shouldn't be too detrimental, I don't think. But once we start getting, I mean, Chuck, when does the vernal, when does the migration start? When does the great migration start? Is it end of February, start beginning of March? It's, yeah, it's, it's in that time, and it's going to happen. And Rainstorm that's however, weather, Mother Nature, the ice starts receding, ice starts receding. receding. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's one every year's different and special. The sooner the better, warming, it's going to be something that needs to be watched. Yeah, so the sooner the better. We really want to avoid you're coming, unfortunately, at the end of February, you're coming right into peak vernal pool activity season. Now, with a you're right there. Is it, is it the one at, adjacent to the causeway that's the concern? Yeah. Right, it's these two next to the causeway that I'm most concerned about, and um, you know, and that's the beginning of vernal pool migration. So all these creatures live in the upland areas, and at the start of the first hint of warming and thawing, they make this grand traverse across country from wherever they've been hibernating down to the vernal pool for mating and all that so so you know when you're it's, it's a time especially that there's um, special signs put up at roads even in the middle of the night people go out and they'll they'll stop and there'll be a whole there'll be a, a large number of turtles or salamanders or things crossing a particular road because they're doing the vernal pool migration um, for the mating season so would love to see this project done by the end of February. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so I'd wait. Please don't go into March because it may get a little tricky. Well, so that's, I guess that's the question is what happens, you know, the holidays are coming up, you know, realistically, by the time you get bids, you get someone contracted, what happens if there's a delay to the, the schedule, whether it's starting or while you're in construction or contracting, is the plan to... You're saying end of January, February, but if that goes, gets to the middle of February, are you planning to scratch it until next winter or next fall, or is the plan to to try to do this in March or continue and keep on going? If is that there is no cutoff date, or correct? That they well, I think we could set up. I mean, I, I think I guess I hadn't thought about the vernal pool aspect, but I was thinking more on the frozen ground. Yeah. From a frozen ground. You know, March, you know, the end of March, March 21st or something like that, the ground's pretty much still frozen. So I was hoping that that might be our kind of the end date that we could, if we could finish it by. Because once we get into the spring, now the causeway is much more vulnerable to, you know, the ruts. Yeah. And mucking and rutting. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, but I, I. So that's, so that's a totally just yeah. situational. It's, it's the vernal pools are there, they're mapped something that's got to be considered um, and I don't know which target species were identified for those two pools but if there's anything uh, I don't have a good understanding unfortunately of um, you know even endangered populations because there tend to be a lot of endangered a number of endangered species are active in the vernal pools so that's that's a concern um, the other, uh, most of the cutting areas identified with, with your uh, 
uh, red dots there. Most of it, like over half of it, I didn't see any major uh, wetland issues with, as you could probably assume. The part that I had kind of the biggest concerns about were identified as um, the stand identified as 45. Um, because that looks on this map, it looks like it's right, looks like it goes right to the base of slope in a couple of, of areas, um, which would be the wetland line. Um, so yeah, I, I, I've got a couple concerns about um, getting those areas done, uh, whatever has to work has to be done in there, setting up good erosion control, and setting up good soil stabilization after the work is done so that when the spring melts and heavy rains come, we don't see huge slugs of dirt getting washed into the wetland because they're, you know what I mean? So. But if we're, if we're coming in with, you know, this type of equipment that's kind of cutting the tree, we're dragging it away and the ground is frozen, is that gonna create an opportunity to, for that, Erosion to wash I, in. I think I think if those if if this comes if that work is done, um, and just to be clear, you're not gonna um, dig out the roots. No, right? no. You're just gonna cut kind yes. of at the base. Yes. So you know at that point when you think about how much soil disturbance that is, that's really pretty. If it's frozen ground and hopefully the vehicle doesn't get stuck <laughs> on a steep slope in the snow and in the ice and all that. You know, and you don't like dig in in a, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. Granted that none of those complications happen. Um, if there's no, if there's no severe rutting that really creates big holes in the dirt, you know, I think that's ideal. I think that's kind of an ideal that's situation. That's the goal. And for, from the next stand, the next step from my standpoint would be to just keep that erosion control, like some hay bales or silt socks or whatever we decide to set up as like a, a, a check on any potential erosion. Um, the next thing is, is the replanting and, you know, and what's gonna, but, or whatever, you know, tell me about what's gonna come back. What's, how's this gonna be revegetated? Well, what a forester has told us that this is a very good year for acorns and and uh, so he said that that will happen naturally. That, you know, that this, the understory is starving for sunlight. And once that appears, then the saplings and, you know, these acorns will take off. So there really, there is no need. Which from a, which from a conservation standpoint, it's kind of exciting because acorns means oak trees and oak trees. Red, I'm just such a geek about this now. Oak, and help me out, Carl, if I'm wrong, but, um, Oak trees, I read in some book at the library, can support up to 250 native species per tree. Wow. So they're a fairly high value habitat tree to have. And a lot of people hate them because acorns, you know, can, they're a bother for people's lawns, but, but just, habitat wise. Is the plan to actually have erosion control set up around? We were not planning on it just because it is winter. So we were hoping that we could get in, remove the trees without disturbing the ground you know, minimally, and then I would, on. I would. This is it would be a large area, and yeah. and I, yeah. the concern is, and I don't want to have this boil down to a financial thing, but the reality is that the more we have, you know, we've got a certain amount of money just to take down the dead trees that the town marks with the orange marks. It was seven thousand dollars. That's a small number. We're talking about four and a half acres. Now, it's not going to be proportionally larger because there's value to a number of, to m many of those trees. That uh, you know, so we're hoping that maybe that could, if not break even, certainly offset. Sure. So the goal is to do it for the funding that's available. And so if we put a lot of money, if we if we have to do it, we have to do it. But if we have to put a lot of money in for other things other than cutting down trees. Chuck, do you see any could, issues with the erosion control in the areas we're, we're talking about? I don't, but I think Anik has brought up a great point, and that's why I brought up this slide here showing that it's in um, priority habitat. And I was wondering if it's been reviewed by um, 
or what the what the force says about the fact that it's in primary habitat. Uh, and okay. is there what's your view process for that? And did you go uh, through that process? And I think you made a great point Does that about trigger a yeah. state review. Yeah. For well, the, the I'm state not, reviewed I'm, the I forest cutting plans. I'm sorry. The state reviewed the forest, and they provided which, which state department? The state. Oh, Department of Conservation and Recreation. Do you think they? Huh. I, don't, I don't know okay. if they look at that aspect, but how long does this one take? Take about a month. Um, yeah, you know, in terms of erosion control, I could see some smart um, situational um, erosion control set up based on conditions. I'm not, uh, you know, I, I know your intent is to improve the habitat quality overall. Uh, you know, make it a healthier forest. And a safer um, forest. And a safer forest. And I'm all in favor of that, and I, I think we're working together there. So, But at the same time, if imperfect world, if ruts do happen, if, if the banks are steep enough, you know, maybe not, may, you know, some type of erosion control, there's a variety of different erosion control things that can be um, employed depending on the slope. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we put down mats, sometimes we put down... I'm going to be honest with you, Anika, it really, what you're talking about really is not necessary. Uh, if this is done when the ground is frozen and it's done with the type of equipment that would, would, was pictured on the screen, those tires are so large and they, they spread over such a, a surface area. They don't sink in if the ground is frozen. Um, you know, that's not something I would be concerned with, but as a member of the, this commission, what I'm concerned with is if you don't have a contractor that's ready to go, you're already too late. Because most, most people that are going into places like this and most loggers are going a thousand miles an hour when the ground is frozen because that's when they can go in and get their money. Um, so if, the other thing is, is that I would, I would like to see a, a contractor here in front of us so that we can ask the contractor specific questions about the equipment, about their process, you know, about the log, you know, crossing on this this uh, dike area, what they're going to plan on doing, whether it's lineal, whether it's cross, whether it's with the red pines, what they plan on doing with that, or whether they plan on doing it with frass. As you're doing this here and you're dragging these trees out, there's going to be a tremendous amount of broken up uh, limbs and sticks that are going to be on all these trails. When that happens, what happens after the after that that process is done? Is that going to be cleaned up? How is it going to be cleaned up? How is it going to be uh, 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 landscaped? When when I mean landscaped, I don't mean you know like plantings done. But are you going to put uh, cr uh, wood chips down on the on the uh, on the on the roadways after those that uh, the, that limb and, and uh, treetop frass? that's going to be on those roadways, how is that going to be accomplished? And that's something that specifically the logger that's going to do this job is going to be able to answer that question, and they're going to have to answer that question to see what's going to happen to the paths and the roads in the town forest after they cut the trees. I'm not really concerned about whether when they're coming in, especially if they do it when the ground is frozen. The ground is frozen, you know, those tires, have, they're, they're like two feet wide. Um, I would say to almost anyone that you could put, if you had a good steel toe shoe on, you could put your foot underneath one of those tires and run it over with one of those machines and we wouldn't get hurt. Your foot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but because, because of the, because of the, the weight distribution that's on there, but you know, there's a lot of questions kind of unanswered as to how this is going to happen, and it's going to be specific to the contractor that's going to be doing it. Dave, I don't, I don't know. I, I think that what you're saying is a little bit of the chicken or the egg scenario. I mean, he's trying to get bids from contractors. If we've got certain concerns or restrictions that we want to include as part of our RDA, they need to, the, the somebody bidding on this project needs to understand those restrictions. And so I think we need to be able to identify where our areas of concern are, what we plan on, what we we have concerns from the standpoint of maintaining the, the trails inside those resource areas. And that needs to be in the 
in any sort of decision for an RDA or, or whatever it ends up being, but you can't ask someone to be contracted and then come in, talk to the commission, and we're going to set some new rules. That's going to, this project is no go if that, that's the case. Do you already have a proposal, a request for a proposal? It's, it's in a draft ready to go out, so we just need to incorporate whatever oh, conditions. Mike's saying you've got to include those requirements in the. So oh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a draft. It's ready to. Yeah. Well, it's ready to that's what we want. Just the other comment I can make about people I know that do this stuff for a living. They come with those snippers. A very, very generous, slow snipper can take down a tree every couple of minutes. If you give them every five minutes, it's only six days worth of cutting. The rest of it's just hauling it out of there. Yeah. So. Well, and then the operation will be using the. the to the skidder to bring it to the council ring area because that's where they'll set up the chipper. They're not going to be dragging all of these trees all the way out to the compost. That's all going to be centralized in the council ring because sure. the first step is going to be take down all those dead trees because if we don't take those dead trees down soon, that area won't be used this so, the whole summer. So it's really that's why we want to you know get it. Uh, um, you know, out to bid as soon as we can, mm -hmm. so that and then they'll, they'll say they'll set up where the, the dead trees are at the council ring. They'll do the, the, the chipping. They'll do whatever the equipment is that you know prepares the, the slasher to get it ready to, for the log preparation, and then they'll load that on rubber tired trucks and then haul it out to the compost. Well, my only my only point was that if they get this done and they get a break from the weather, there should be no reason why they can't clean up after. So that's also you just want to make sure that that's included. That's part of our sure. Our, our <clears throat> there is already a limit that, that that the slash can be no more than a certain height. So there's there's value in just as when any tree drops their leaves, there's <coughs> there's there's value. So I, I can't promise that when the logger is done that it's going to look like nobody's ever been there. Room clean is the expression. Well, <laughs> that's what we want, and this project will never happen. So that you, we Sir, will see that, the, that there was activity. That we're trying to protect. There. So we, we just, the goal is to try to, you know, come up with a, a, you know, a reasonable amount that we can do, afford to do and then get the job done. Some specific areas that you want so, so, uh, so, yeah, I took a look at your two maps, and based on your two maps, it seems to me that, for, to me, the two areas of most sensitive concern so you're saying are the vernal pools along the causeway. And if you look at the treatment areas and forest stands figures, it's, um, it's, it's stand 45. And to be clear, right, and you're it's saying only not, stand not, 45. The entire, not, not have citation along the entire four and a half acres, but specific areas. Well, I think, I mean, a lot of their, their logging work, most of their logging work is outside of the buffer zone. And then there's a small portion that's in the outer, the, exterior, the, the outer 50 to 100 foot part of the buffer zone. But that's not true for the area of, of stand 45. Stand 45, it goes from the buffer zone pretty much in some areas right up to the wetland limit. So stand 45 is really the area that I'm most concerned about um, and also the area for where these vernal pools are active around the, the causeway. So are we thinking we do want, we would want some erosion controls in the area of 40, 45? I, I still think that could be, uh, you know, based on conditions, I really hope that you know, Dave, I don't have, I didn't have working knowledge of how fast and how um, non-damaging this equipment can be. But I also don't know what the ground conditions are going to be this winter. Um, and, and, and if it gets and delayed. I'm, believe me, I hope that conditions are ideal so that it's all frozen solid and there's no damage to the ground. Um, and, and it's the perfect time of year to do this because there's no other low shrub or herbaceous growth that's going to get destroyed that's in the process of growing so um, well very little I'm sure some of those shrubs are going to get um, damaged but <coughs> you know like I said my major concern is stand um, 45 uh, erosion control around that and erosion control uh, around the dike what about the vernal pool what about review from well, I, yeah yeah 
I don't so know. So was that truck about the review? Uh, I don't know. So the it's state it's rare review. habitat. Yeah. And I just checked notice and of intent form, which I I just think the applicant needs to prove that um, to show us that he's exempt, or send this application, you know, to for a heritage for a preliminary review. Say. Yeah. If they're not exempt. That step has to be taken. Do you know? The and, and do you, have you looked into this at all, whether you guys are exempt from the... I have not. Uh, <coughs> no. Oh. No, this was... Uh, do you know what it takes I, to I can talk with Jane, because Jane... Yeah, you just saw that. Yeah, if we had... Uh, if I had my iPad here, we could look, look it up. But it's something we could get to pretty quickly. But if it has to go through that step, it could be a lot. Yeah. Just, just a question. Since Laura Dooley has reviewed this and has given us her... Yeah, she's DCR. Verbal and true. Approval that does it, she would never review that already. I don't think they're in the same circle, but it would be easy just to, to give them a call. But it's a step that we don't want to avoid. Um, I agree, it's, it's important. Uh, it's so, who, who do we need to? So, this is um, this would be natural <laughs> heritage who, who you'd have to contact, and I could provide that number tomorrow. Or you could ask the, um, the, the forester, Please. if he's exempt, and to just cite that um, in the regulations. The project is exempt, or is yeah, he forced is? to have. A, if you have a forest cutting plan, are you exempt from ESA review? What's what's the name of the review? I thought you just M E S A MESA. M E S A. Yeah, it's part of natural heritage. Yep. Um, NHESP or Natural Heritage Endangered Species Program, and on the map it shows not only if it's vegetation that's usually okay not to, to worry about, but when it's Wildlife. yeah, then you have to be more concerned. I don't think this step has been taken, and I don't think the applicant. You don't. It seems like you didn't. I I, I don't yeah. know what at, at yeah. DPW. DPW really was the author of. Yeah, primary so author of the I think RDA <coughs> needs to it needs to be looked at. Here's uh, I agree. Here's so what would be so what if it's not exempt? What what happens? Uh, so you send uh, in the application. They come back and uh, with some. They probably would tell you when to do the project yeah. and when not to do the project. Similarly, they would have to think conditions. they're going to echo what Anika said by in January and February. Stay out of March. Similar to any other, they would have conditions associated with this is the right time to do it, or this is what you need to protect, or this is what you need to look out for, or based on what's out there. And the, particularly with the wildlife, that's the concern. Um, it's just it's another level of review. And yeah, I'm not familiar if, if you have a, like a town force plan if you're if you are exempt or not. Can that be written into your, um, I guess, I don't know what your... Contingent uh, on... Contingent. Could that be written in? Because of timing, I don't think we can afford to come back here in January. I, I, I don't disagree. Um, um, I, I, if, you, if you can get me some, um, uh, some sort of documentation from Natural Heritage that... Um, your activities are don't don't apply, um, and that Mesa review is not required for this project. If you get some magic email from them, um, then I, I don't have a problem um, writing in some provisional approval based on that information coming to us. I don't know what other people think. Yeah, I would agree. I, I mean, I, I would make make a, any sort of decision contingent on just getting some sort of documentation from the state that this doesn't have to go through that piece of review. Okay. All right. So, with some erosion controls around forty five, Anika. So th there's these two vernal pools. What's the what do we think is the best way to protect those? <laughs> stay away in Get the breeding season. Finish, right? I mean, uh, that's right. I think it's more than just a 
just at, was it the causeway or the dike, whatever the, it's being called. I think it's more than that. I think it's the work in the in the upland area prior to the vernal pool season. I think that, I don't know what kind of um, requirements MISA will put on this project, and like I said, it may, it may be exempt. But that's that's separate, right? Presuming it's exempt. What do we want for protections? I think you're. I think I. Yeah. I Is that know. it? I I would I would um, I, I would say we'd we'd want some vigilance out there, if um. Y you know, if the project if the project is progressing up to that migration point, and we're seeing evidence of migration. I think you have to be done by March, February, or. March one. Yeah, I mean, March we one. We just pick a date. February. Not knowing what. The end of February. <coughs> vernal pool. The vernal pool season. I think we just need to pick a date. I mean, no, knowing that we can't. I'm just saying, we're not going to pick the perfect date. Ground? What's that? Isn't that predicated on frozen ground? I mean, generally, frozen that's. Frozen solid. The ground's frozen solid. Nothing's going to move it around. You'd be surprised. Pardon? So, so it doesn't always happen that way, I, you know, depending on how the season. Well, but I, I'm, I'm just assuming if water's frozen, it's frozen, they're not going to do anything in it, maybe on it. It could be mostly frozen, partially unfrozen, and there could still be some level of activity. Okay, I'm not, I, I, and I'm not trying to, I'm just saying, yeah. what if we have a cold winter and it's, it's still frozen solid in April, I'm just... What if we have a hot winter and it's gone it in the February 1st? I mean, it, 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 it well, we're, trying, we're February. trying to find the best get. We're, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to pick day. something without knowing, yeah. but maybe when we get close to that March date, if it's looking like we're in a deep, deep freeze, you know, and you need an extension at around <clears> March 1st, <throat> why don't we revisit it at that point? Okay. What would happen if they're out there? Half done. I mean, I, I think we're set. I mean, I think we're saying as part of this, the contract documents, we want it in our decision is going to have some contingency that it needs to be done by this certain date. That's or, or postponed until uh, until the vernal pool season. Well, when's the vernal pool season end? It's the end of April, right? We have to wait till the following winter then. And then we're, and then we're into the spring so rains and then the summer dry. Use of that area. So it could be it summer. Will. So I yeah, there's <laughs> there's some funny seasonal issues. Well, there's that first night, and that's right when you describe what's going on. I was saying <coughs> what's happening. Right. And then usually after that, or there's a couple of those. Then after that time, there's not so much activity each night or each day. So there's only but right. There's an intense two weeks, isn't there? I would I would say two that two to three weeks. It would be. I guess we we could come up with some. Something, but if if they were exempt, I think the only thing that I would come up with would be to restrict them um, on uh, t in that March area. But I don't know what date because we don't know what's going to happen this winter. So. How about just how about we just put a date that we revisit it? I mean, I think you know what we're concerned about, um, you know, and we could just write in. A provisional approval to do work until March 1st and additional work conditional upon a review at that time. Yeah. We write that in? Yeah, I'm sure we could write something up. But That's the other thing with this is that this is only at those two vernal pools that are near that dike area. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that are going to be coming out there is the rubber tire vehicles, the uh, once the chip trucks and also the log trucks. And you bring 20 of those in and out of there, and you could you could roll a baby carriage. It's, that road's gonna be that smooth. I'm gonna hold you to that, Dave. Uh, I, I tell, I'm telling you. I'm sure you're, I'm so sure you're right. So what we're worried about is the road being inundated with uh, salamanders, yeah. and the trucks just rolling over on it. Th that's, so that's not just the vernal pool area, right? They're coming from the upland. Right. right. They're coming from the area that's actually getting They're going to be coming work. for 24 hours a day. Hey, so uh, in Framingham, there's a place called uh, uh, something in the woods, Garden in the Woods. 
and they shut down the road because there's no way to protect them. You have to walk up first night, all that. So um, it's 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 curious. I I mean. I wish we knew the answer to. I know. I wish we had this area Misa, more characterized so we could. Yeah, the Mesa question is, so seems to be so know. confusing. Uh, I don't know what they would say and how they would uh, craft the project. Knowing that. You better just told them up last February when you were here because you would have had it all lined up by now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You would have plenty of time to work both sides of the. Mm-hmm. So, can, can I s- have a question? Is it true that these migrations tend to happen at night, or do they happen during the daytime as well? There, there's, based on what I know, and I'm not, I'm not an expert. I just know enough to talk about it. So, <laughs> um, my understanding is there is a big surge at night, especially with full moon, especially with the spring rain. Um, so there, there tends to be kind of like a surge. But there's on it's ongoing. So so. It's my, uh, I'm no expert either. I just yeah. googled it and yeah. it, it tends. Uh, what I'm seeing more, and this is not yeah. in any way prescriptive, but uh, that it tends to happen at night. Now we need to verify it. If there's ample evidence that that's the case, then there is that. That's a mitigating factor. To consider. It definitely works in the favor of the project because uh, you guys are talking me out there in the middle of the night and doing, right. so, doing cutting. But but it doesn't it doesn't mean that there's nothing happening during the day, and you know we want to minimize, avoid damage. And I think we're you know we all want to minimize damage. Yeah, we all yeah. want to minimize, yeah. you know, safety problems. It's, my, yeah. it's just you know I wish there were a perfect world. I wish we could say we could go in there and just magically lift That'd all these nice. trees up and have everything great. Do you Unfortunately, know the UFO? Yeah. We, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So yeah. We're going to so have to make some tough decisions. Can, can I just ask a question? Because we're, we're, we're kind of going in circles here. I want to try to... If we said February 28th, understanding, we don't know, the, but if we said February 28th, is that going to hamstring your <coughs> contract? Is that going to put you guys in a position where you don't think the contractor would be able to be done by then? It, it, it's all going to depend on how quickly we can get the bids in, get it awarded, get the contract prepared. It's going to be very tight. Yeah. And we don't want to wait another year. We don't even want to wait another month. Because in some ways, a month means a year. You know, if we miss this window. Or we've got contractors that have come in and and looked this over. We've had a couple have come in to look at it. Um, Our forester has been in touch with a number of them to, you know, get to probe their interest. So they seem to be interested. So when the forester characterized uh, this area in the forest cutting plan, I don't think I saw it, but did you, Anika, did you see that they mentioned the vernal pools? I didn't see a mention of the vernal pools, but I didn't read um, really meticulously the forest cutting plan. Um, I have to say I did. Um, I mean, one thing I did note was um, I totally applaud your effort to remove the glossy buckthorn in the understory, and I'm thrilled that we have a, um, a volunteer to do that with Boy Scouts. Um, there was one minor question I had about that in terms of like going forward, there might be a seed bank in the soil. Um, you know, so some ho- hopefully. It's not, we understand it's not a one shot deal. Yeah. So, and I we, don't know we, how you it's know, gonna We're continue. very aware that what we don't want to do is by opening, you know, the light in, we don't want. The buckthorn to be the one to, to take get the jump on everything so, else. So no, right. that's that's right. that's all part of the plan. Right. And if I'm out there, I'll, and if you show me what a little sure. part looks like, I'll sure. pull it up uh, here. So. Uh, all right. So I'm a little bit at a loss of the solution with the vernal pool. I mean, I think we have to understand if the contract can be done by February 28th or not. I was doing a little research. Yeah. They didn't list Reading, it was in Lexington, I figure that's close enough. And their average days on March 9th is an early day, and January, I mean April 15th, 14th is a late day for when they start the migration. I think we saw something on here around, it was like March 16th. Yeah, yeah. so, so I, I, it's, if you want to set a date, 
<coughs> that first week of March may have to be the day that you sat. Yeah. Well, we're talking March 1, you know, March 1, March just, 9, it's, it's in there. This. I'll take March 9. It looks like there's no <laughs> other way around that. <laughs> yeah. Even though April, February 28th, March, March 1 sounds so much better when it's in a bit than April. Yeah. Yeah. Um, March 9th, Monday, sounds, March 9th <laughs> sounds very nice with the option that we could come back to this board if we needed to extend it yeah. by a few days. Well, I think... And if we like, have a stretch to the end of February where it's 15 degrees out for three weeks, then we can extend it. Right. So I, I guess I would, I, I would just work on Friday. I, I set end dates for Fridays. I would propose a March 6th. I think that's earlier than everything we've seen so far. It gives time to at least extend past. Uh, yeah. We have a commission meeting on the 28th of February. Is that, did I say that right? And the, no. So the 11th of March would probably be a meeting date. Yeah, but I don't want to wait till that meeting date, right? They, the, they right, would, the 26th. We will know the forecast by the 26th. The 26th would be, the 26th, a, sorry. Would be Thank a meeting you. date. So the, the issue with the 28th, is also they're coming before <coughs> us on the 26th with uh -huh. very little time frame. So I think if we said the 6th, that would give the opportunity that if this had, you know, to relook at the condition that you could come before the commission on that, that meeting on the 26th and gives a, a week and a half for everybody to react, essentially. Uh, and then uh, you're making notes here. So. Oh, I. That's, oh, that's they contingent. Have to, I mean, yeah. that, that is oh, I, I'm, step one. I'm, yeah, that's step the one is all of this is yeah. contingent on that this MISA exemption from this MISA review. Yes. Um, or uh, their review. Or, so or, or their complete review. True. Um, and since the other thing that Forrester told me was that, <clears throat> that uh, he stayed away from the steepest banks that go down mm -hmm. into the wetlands. So if. I mean, I know we talked about doing something around Area 45, but you know, if, if the ground is really frozen and we're not getting to that steepest part of the bank, do we need to put erosion control there? I, yeah, I, I don't think, I think the places where erosion control would be needed in Area 45 are basically the areas, um, to me it seems like two particular, two particular zones you know, the part over here next to the wetland and the part over here next to the wetland. Okay. So I don't think we're talking more than 100 foot. Have it numbers. might just be like 200 foot stretches. Or okay. I don't think What's we're talking more than... What's the numbers of those? So that's, air, that's um, stand 45. Um, and there are two... I mean, I, I think for the sake of contingency, just to have it We could certainly have them carry 100 feet. Well, I, I'm thinking, if, well, I don't know. I mean, it might, yeah, it might be 100 feet, it might be 150. All right, we'll say 150 feet of, of uh, motion control. Motion control. Yeah. So. And it might be a lot less, I mean. Yep. So we're going to be careful with the erosion control. And I just, so I already told you this on the phone when you called. <laughs> yeah, so but now it's so the phone so I, I would like to stay with the original plan which is, I'll just read it, the erosion, control, fencing, and hay bale barrier will be determined at the pre-activity meeting by me, if you give me permission. So we could, we could look at that beforehand or whatever, but if you may not need it like Dave said. I right. mean, it may not right. be needed. But if we tell them to carry it in the bid, it's in the bid. Yes. If we don't, that's, that's no, the purpose that's right. for me to right. say it change now. Order. We'll have them put it as a as a as, as a, a line item. As a, as a, yeah, a unit price. A line, right. line item to be added upon yep. termination. Yep. So that you know what the cost field. is going to be, but you're not paying for it if they don't need it. Yep. Yes, but ultimately, I do want you to be the one that decides where it goes. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. I think Chuck should be responsible. Yeah. I trust you, Chuck. That's right. <laughs> I, I just I just want to blame trust you. Trust you. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. That's no problem. Not Good for man. that. Good man, Chuck. All right. Okay. Any, any any other items? So we just I just the only thing I really did is just change. <clears throat> this is a winter project. Must be completed by March 6, 2020. If the project is delayed, and not completed by March 6, the deadline, the applicant must return to the conservation commission. But what if we don't have a meeting? Is it conservation commission get the approval from the conservation commission? 
administrator? Do you want to do that? You want you guys want to talk to her? So that's where you stopped. You know, is it going to the next meeting? No, we can't. I think it, by going to the next meeting, right. it might be you outside know, your date range. Until <clears throat> right. what do you mean by next meeting? Next meeting the is March sixth a meeting date? Mar the meeting oh, before that would be the tw February twenty sixth. No, check saying if we don't have that meeting. If they want to continue it on the March sixth, the next meeting is the eleventh. So they have to wait. Oh, I was thinking that they need to be in front of us on the February twenty sixth to ask for that extension. That that they need to understand where their schedule is by that February twenty sixth. Are you confident that that's going to be a good enough? It's going to be too much of a window. It's a something week happening half. dramatically with a weather warming trend or something, or are you just you good with it? I, mean, I think it's fine. I'm going with March sixth. Seems like that's a safe period to to pull. It just remember, no one ever can figure out what night first night's on. I know. <laughs> um, the head salamander knows. Yeah, yeah, he does. Except that it's at night. I'm sure it will be done before March 6th. No, I'm going to have confidence <laughs> that they're going to get this bit yeah, together. And February 28th, we're going to be done. You know, I, I think if the project's not uh, done by March know. 6th, then we, just, then we I'd like them we need to, to We need Man, to revisit. He takes, yeah. he takes a long time so, to get so, things out. Chuck, this is, this is what I would like. I, I would like them, if it looks like it's going to extend past March 6th, before our meeting, you know, I would like them to come before us before our meeting on the 26th, February 26th. If at that time we we think well it's we're cutting it close or day to day maybe at that point we decide you know what Chuck you've got a good grasp on the weather in the next week and a half it can be an administrative decision from there that point on what about a start but but at least February 26th allows this commission to revisit start date like if you're not out there by as soon as possible actually have no, but I'm saying happen. if you're not out there by February 12th I actually February have start. a meeting is the 27th if, if it's on the Thursday. Right. We're going to know way before. I don't know. We'll, we'll know way before March 26th if we're going to hit March. February 26th. February 26th if we're going to hit March. Is it 26th or 27th? 26th is a Wednesday. 27th is a Thursday. 27th. 27th is a Thursday. Right. Right. It's going to take six days, maybe, of intense day, day in, day out work. That's a maximum of, you know, week week and a half with moving and demoving. And okay. All right. And they'll, All right. they'll drive in once. And the other <laughs> and they'll drive out once. Yeah. Demo. So. And then it's just the, the chipping. Then it's just the on-site chipping. Yeah. Any so. Comments from the public? This is all town forest. This is all us. <laughs> nice, to, nice to meet you. So I, I just for um, process um, as when we walk out of here do we get the document from you? Nope. So who do we get this document from because we now need to pass this on? You get it when we find out from Misa or we find out that that step. So, okay. so, so the process as soon as you this finish is that, then this. Go ahead. I think you're going to say what I'm going to I think say. that first step with Misa and to find out if you're exempt and whoever you have to talk to, which would be great, or if you have to turn in the material and have it reviewed. Right then we would need to know and we would adjust our schedule to that. If you can um, prove that you're exempt or then this will be, I assume this will be signed with the changes that we've made tonight and then I, I could get it to you directly. Did you get a phone number for that? Oh, yeah, I did. Um, can I hold on? Project review. Right. So um, okay. Now this is for me for the Mesa project review. Yeah. Is this is. Um, That's what you're requesting that we get. Right. It's okay. it's funny. So yeah, just. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to find it on their website. It looks of that. like the so you would you would contact um sorry Chuck excuse me I'm, I'm looking at the Mesa here now exemptions yeah. and item one it says um natural 
normal maintenance and improvement of land and agricultural and aquacultural use. I understand. The town but forest the, is essentially a tree farm. But the scale of cutting might trigger a certain review threshold with them. I don't know. I don't yeah, it do does mention work. a forest cutting plan. So this may be as simple as just yes. passing it by them. I don't do MESA review. I'm not familiar with MESA review, but it's a, it's a worthwhile step to take. A necessary step. I think it's I think it's important to just double check there. So the MESA <coughs> Natural Heritage phone number is 508-389-6363. Um, it's Natural Heritage and Endangered <coughs> Species Program. I had for Natural Heritage 508-389-6360. That's what the DEP website says. But I mean, you can sure. you can look it up. Yep. yep. In our Visa forest, we have already reviewed this, and we're not aware of it. So we will check. Yeah. Yeah, and very few projects we work with have MESA review. So it's a little new, newer to us, too. Given the scope of what our forester has done in this area with other local municipalities, he, he may be much more experienced <coughs> in this than we are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll see what that, I'll see what that say. Thank you. OK. Thank you Thanks for your time. Thanks for the submittal. Do I hear a motion? I move we continue. No. No? All right. Well, well <laughs> motion on the floor. <laughs> All those in favor? No, no, no. no. I don't want to, I don't want to get you should, um, you should bring it through. She yeah. made a motion. See if it's seconded. Go ahead. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Oh, sorry, can I ask a question? We should move. We should. You continue. <laughs> Because so this is to continue. Should oh, I? She didn't get that out. <laughs> uh, I, I, did you? I thought I did. Oh. I did. We had to go through it because she, it she made a motion. Um, so I, I think this is worth the discussion. Is is the decision we want to make to continue this or to yes provide some sort of contingent so right. uh, decision? She can retract the motion. Or you can vote it down. Yeah, you can vote it and down. And I could make another motion. So I thought the plan here tonight was to we gather all our information. It sounds like someone in the audience felt that there's there's possibility of an exemption. So I want to move. I would say we should sign this as amended and and uh, then wait for the material. Lock it away with Chuck. So we have a motion to continue, which wouldn't do what I just said on the on the floor. So it's been seconded. Uh, now we need to vote. Um, all those in favor? Wait all those opposed? I can. I don't have to vote for that. Just all those opposed. All right. Do we have another motion? <laughs> make a motion to, to make a motion and vote against it. Motion to, <laughs> to accept. Make a motion. Just gotta get traction. To just gotta get either moving. issue or accept. Negative or determination. Accept. Uh, okay. okay. Issue a negative determination and issue positive. To be negative, right? Three, <laughs> two. Uh, with with the following conditions: uh, that it would be issued if it didn't require MISA review. That the uh, the project would be completed by February 28th, uh, subject to review well, March, and approval. March sixth. March 6th, yeah. subject to review the and, uh, by the C Conservation Commissioner and also with the uh, erosion control subject to review and determination by the Conservation Commissioner. Sure, and just, uh, uh, just to change up one thing, if they need an extension, they need to be at our uh, February 28th yes. meeting. So I think that's clear. 
Thank you all. <laughs> it gets late. We start. I'll second Dave's motion. That's out right. Second. Oh, you second. Sounds really. This, well, I don't. I don't want them to have to keep on coming back. All, all those. You know, all those in favor. With motions like that, nobody would do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you. I'm glad Dave did. That's hard. Dave, you did great. Appreciate that. Well, that that'll give you the opportunity to seek bids. You know, and if they they, they can meet your timeline, they can meet your timeline. If they can't meet your timeline, then you know we're going to be put off for another year. And then you can know what's going to be. Then you have additional time to work on. I just want to say, Tom Gardner, congratulations on Josh's induction. What? I missed that. What, what did Tom do now? <laughs> Not that it was his son. His son was inducted into the Red, uh, Reading High School Hall of Fame for wrestling. Oh. All right, Tom. Congratulations. Tom's, Tom's son was a, a stud on the Reading High School wrestling team. Uh, well, I, I, well, I've seen his father drive nails, so I'm not I'm not surprised. Tom, chip off the old block. Just, just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, everyone, for the forest committee coming out. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, we should have taken advantage of them being here, talking to them about hey, let's do enough. I wish you would have had a better time. I didn't think this was And not that you knew that we would have discussed it. And then, like, oh, let's just like, I just thought about it as we're doing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I felt the same way. I'm like, oh, my God. Contract. No, I know. Yeah, thank, thank you. So here's so here's the deal, like my, Carl. My is if if there's work in a I'm just gonna call DEP priority habitat. In so other words, a, a state well, map habitat so area that's protective of an endangered job, species. You know, how do we know that? But we but we're checking if it is. Right, there are these map layers that are on the state GIS, and if it's within a priority habitat, then you got to consider that. And that's not necessarily... Who determines that? Has that already been predetermined eons ago? That's right, or does someone come out to check? That's what I it's think saying. I so what's in the process? This mapping. And, uh, I don't know who does that mapping. After so I make some phone calls, I'll make sure I uh, not call you. But would that have been determined okay. when those... Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Those... Um, Right. Vernal pools were authorized and not necessarily, I don't think. Oh, right. gonna... I I think it was probably a whole yeah, right. pilot project mapping program Ooh. where the priority habitats they made it a pri they made it important at the state level to map this. All right, we're gonna move on to our agenda item on 725-270-0723, minor plan change, Austin Prep. Yep. Um, you have that in front of you, um, and the three items that will be speaking uh, that uh, Chris Hunter will be talking about. Uh, what? What? <laughs> He's going to present the plan. The He's going to present, present it first, and then the we'll plan vote. changes. Yeah. Then we'll vote it. Hopefully, I will significantly shorten your average hearing time this evening. So, you want to um, just let me know what, uh, what we're talking about here and what file number and all that. This is 270723, minor plan change, Austin Prep. For uh, Austin Prep, is for the, um, for the field the project, field. the synthetic turf project. You understand they're proposing to put in a new footing design for the scoreboard. Um, and that footing. Approach on the jurisdictional area. Explain a little bit. Yeah. So, school board. So there's a number of changes that we've made. Plans. Not many of them are reductions. <coughs> what brought us? <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> what brought us in front of you this evening is a modification of scoreboard footing um, that became apparent as we submitted for the building permit. The difference between a permitting set and a construction set is typically the difference is the structural engineer stamp on some of the structures for the grandstand footings and things like that. When the when we came through permitting, we gave you a typical scoreboard foundation footing that we've used on almost every project, which is 
20 feet long, three feet wide, and six feet deep. The structural engineer came back after looking at the soils as we were ordering the scoreboard and said, I want it 19 feet long, six feet wide, and three feet deep. So he wanted it wider shell because of the soils that he saw underneath. So he changed the dimension. Uh, we worked with them a little bit. We went back to them and said, you know, after Chuck raised the concern, you have to have that footing. You know, are you concerned? He said, well, if I turn it back up, I'm going to want to extend it longer, and it became more of an impact in that, that way. So um, what we did was we took his footing and rotated it slightly and pulled it forward so that it was a little bit closer to the, uh, to the walkway, really brought it right up to the edge of the walkway. So if we can minimize any of the extension on the back side, it's, there's, you know, if it was three feet and went to six feet, we had a foot and a half by 20 feet in the back side, so 30 square feet that was going to be different. By bringing it forward and rotating it, we got that difference down to about 15.7 square feet of impact. And this is within the replication area, by the way, not within the wetland itself. Um, so it would, in theory, um, reduce the amount of replication by 15.7 square feet, Chuck, I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Enlarge There's an enlargement down here that, that speaks to that uh, on the plans that you've got in front of you. There it is. So you can see the hatched area that kind of runs along the bottom there is the area that's different from what you had before. Uh, and that's the 15.7 uh, square feet. You can see, uh, maybe it's here, easier if I point this. This dash line here is the original footing, and this heavier line overall replication area is 1,412 square feet. The wetland impact was 676 square feet. So even with a 15 square foot reduction, we're still well over the two to one, which I think is what the intent of the original plan was. Um, so we're not proposing any other um, significant modifications, but I'm happy to chat with you about whatever you'd like to do. There are a couple other changes I'd just like to point out before we dive too deep on this. We made um, a significant reduction over in here. You can see it better on that plan. We shortened the tennis courts by 60 feet, um, and that was achieved by not reducing the number of courts, but reducing the distance between courts. Originally, we had 24 feet between the six courts. We went to 12 feet, so we reduced 60 feet. That eliminated 60 feet of asphalt and 60 feet of retaining wall. Up in here for about 7,200 square feet. The other minor changes, and really we put these on the plan, we said if we're coming in front of you to show you one change, we might as well show you everything. The, um, the bullpen and walkways flipped right here. Remember on the original permanent plan, we had the bullpen on the far side. We wanted to get the bullpen adjacent to the field so that when the pitcher's called out, he doesn't have to come across uh, a walkway where his dad might be standing and be able to uh, chat with him. So we, we brought him right in, and we did the same thing over. Um, the other reduction, which I should have talked about initially, is we've removed the lights on the tennis court. Um, Austin Prep has decided not to put lights on the tennis court um, and that they didn't need them. Um, so those are really, those are the bulk of the changes that we've seen. The, the only one that really creates an impact that raised Chuck's uh, concern was right down here in the school board. Questions from the commission? No, no lights on the tennis courts? No lights on the tennis courts. Oh, we put, we no, one of the, the people I used to teach beside, he was a varsity tennis coach, and that was one of the big pluses. Any of the schools that they went to that had lights, yeah. the tennis courts. So. Are they, are they putting the infrastructure in, but just not putting the lights up? No, they have chosen not to put it in. Part of it was a cost-saving measure, but also they didn't feel like their program needed with tennis courts at night. It was certainly a discussion that we had with the neighbors as we were going through permitting, not only with you guys, but with planning as well. And, um, so they decided to say, take them out altogether. So can I ask, where's the top of the foundation? Is that buried in the permanent condition? Right here? Yeah. So, yeah, so, the so you've got two columns coming out going into concrete foundation. Do we see the top of the concrete? One thing you're going to see is a two foot by two foot square that holds the I-beam that comes down right yeah. onto the, the footing. The rest of that the rest of that concrete footing will be buried 12 inches below grade. So when you say it's impact, so Chuck, I don't know if you can go to that zoom in area. It's below. Yes. Uh, 
So the only thing I mean, you're going to see. It's still going to be on this side of the fence. You're yeah. still going to put topsoil over it? Just, or just the fence, yeah. Just the fence. The only thing you're going to see are these two um, concrete columns, if yeah. you will, will come up above grade. The, everything within this will be 12 inches below grade, and the one with Zevers will come right up to the edge of the walkway. So what we did, we brought these two concrete piers right up to the edge of the asphalt walkway. And you'll see one with Zevers. So, so what's the height of the wall from the constructed wetland to the top of the asphalt wall, walkway? Can you remind me? That asphalt walkway, I'm sorry, is that pretty much at the wetland? What's the elevation change from the <coughs> asphalt walkway to, to the, the constructed wetland? The asphalt walkway is almost right. It's right there. It really isn't a transition. From one oh, it is. Other. Okay. For some reason... Wall. There's a, wall, reason I'd there's a wall in this corner right here that cuts into the hill and that's been constructed okay. and, and pushes that grade back. <laughs> but here, <coughs> excuse me, we're effectively at grade. We, we'll have an asphalt walkway that transitions that grade to low and seed and, and then replication. And there's a, okay. and there's a fence right off the asphalt fence. paved. There's a split. So that you've got the 10 foot walkway, then you've got about a 12 inch grass strip, if you will. 12, 12 inches, right? Yeah, 12 inch. And then you've got a two rail split rail fence, you know, natural uh, maple split rail fence that runs along there that defines the edge. And then everything will be naturally vegetated behind that and just let go. But this area that you see hash, which is the 1,400 square feet, will be a replication of that. So it's really, as Chuck had said, it's a minor plan, but it is a change. Um, so I was happy to document it for you folks and uh, just explain what we're we gave the same plan to CPDC, so they're aware of the change as well. As a geotechnical engineer, if someone tells you to increase your footing size, you do it. You do, absolutely, you do it. <laughs> Chuck, do you have anything else? Uh, so, I just wanted to uh, thank you for the uh, monitoring reports and uh, just. Uh, the one for this week. Actually, no. And uh, just, I don't know, for the commission, do you want to? Let us know if you're going to continue through the winter working, or is the mothballing it for a couple of months? Or how, as of right now, we're going to stay active because we think the snow that came today. We were laser grading the tennis courts yesterday, mm -hmm. and then we got this overnight. So they it's they yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they are going. They are. They have been going in and putting in the Musco Foundation. So what they've got done, if you've seen it. Um, almost the entirety of, of, there's a concrete turf anchor that kind of comes around this, which would be below grade. That's almost in in its entirety. The, the post for the chain link fence that will go around that, but for the most part, I'd say they're about halfway in around to here, and they'll still be working on here. They've got the sports lights foundations in all the way around. They've got the wall and the tennis court area graded. The wall's completed, the tennis court area's graded, but not asphalt yet. And they're starting on some of the trenching for electric. We've got a walkway that comes down this edge with a couple light poles. They're starting that work. And then they were excavating in through here uh, for the start of that walkway. So what's the timeline? Timeline? Uh, the athletic director would like to be playing baseball in, in April. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that's realistic. So we'll see. Well, so we're, we're going to be able to work until winter. We're not going to work through winter conditions. We're not going to work on frozen ground. At some point when the ground is frozen, I'm going to put a stop to the work because they can't be pushing some soil that's frozen and working on a, on a frozen subface. I can't lay synthetic turf in temperatures that are higher than 40 degrees. So it has to be 40 degrees. I'm sorry, lower than 40 degrees. So it's got to be 40 degrees and rising. And I think we've seen the, the last of that for a little bit. So, hmm. so I think one of the conditions was to give a weekly report or weekly updates on the project. Chuck, have you been getting those? I have. I think I'm only owed this week's, right? This week's. Yep. Uh -huh. And so it's it's pretty easy because like you were telling me that Cork and there's a Monday meeting. And is it Monday? I don't Wednesday. Know. Wednesday. It was Wednesday. today. Yeah. Wednesday yeah. meeting. And that's when they generate the report and I get it after that. Right. And I've sent it out to the commission. So <coughs> was there, after looking at it, is there something needed or is it? Meeting your expectations, Chuck. We've been putting Have we them seen up. We seen one of those recently. Yeah, we've been putting them up on Dropbox. Did I invite you into the Dropbox account? 
I don't know. We're getting Dropbox here in town. I, oh, I know. didn't know that the towns allowed Dropbox. It's just a link. You download it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in any event, I'll make sure that we email them out. I yeah, may I have been putting them up on Dropbox. I, I, I think they're like, are like Army Corps of Engineers and allowed to do it. And then you went to Dropbox? We, in the beginning, we were emailing them directly, and then I sent you a link, so I assumed you were picking those off there. But if you're not, yeah. I'll just email them. I'll try the link. But the, no, emailing me is the best. Chuck, have you been sending these reports to everybody or just to the chair and vice chair? Because I don't think I've seen You don't see You haven't seen one? But then I, think, again. I think I saw one. I remember seeing pictures when they had the maps out there the last time I remember ever seeing it. I'll catch you everybody up tomorrow. It sounds like there's been some on Dropbox, and, and maybe I was missed a few. But, um, We've been doing them every week for the last I don't know, six weeks or so, so I'll make sure everybody's caught up tomorrow. I'll send Chuck an email with as many as I can attach at one time. And that's great. All right. Thanks. Good luck. Thank do, I hear, do I hear a motion? Make a motion to approve the line of plan change for 270-0723 Austin Prep. All those in favor? Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. All right. All right. Old new business. What about the uh, IDA off store down? We did that. That was that was our town board. Oh. That was probably So I, um, so this has been done for a while, but with the weather, uh, it was hard to go out and see. And then when it came in for a certificate of compliance, there was snow on the ground, snow coming. Um, but the owner sent me some pictures today, and you know we can take a look and see if. Uh, So anyways, here's the pictures. Have a good night. Folks. Bye. And we're looking at some grass that's established. The erosion control fence still up. You told me this already, but what was this project again? Because we've had a couple in this area. Pretty Ashley Place? I don't know how to tell you what this project is. There was nothing that stood out other than there was a patio area in the stream and chairs in a kind of a paver or maybe bluestone or something that was in a stream area. We asked that to be removed. What, were they, what, what did they do in what addition? They did an addition, yeah. That, that's what I'm asking. It was oh. just an addition. Is this, okay. the, is this so the one with the backyard that has a culvert the at the end this, of it? This, this stream area going into a culvert at that point. There was like some chairs and whatnot. There. Okay. So I haven't been out there. Yep. But Pictures are showing. Grass is established. Grass. So they did say there's no rush on it, but um, this is what it looks like. Did we require um, markers, right? There's a marker right there. Oops. Wait, do you again? see the bounce? I thought I saw one. Oh. Which address, Chuck? Uh, 30 Ashley. This is right in the area of like all the, tr the tree properties, right? It's like they're all grouped at that same trees. spot. Yeah, I don't see the bounce on this one. Okay. It's yellow. familiar but I can't say that it's a bound for sure. This this is the property where you go in the backyard and the whole backyard like at the end of the backyard there was a wall with a culvert pipe in it. That's right. Yeah. That looks pretty good actually. That looks like a bound right there. 
Yeah. What is what is that I think, orange? I stuff? think it was to the right or left of where you are. It's right there. Oh, yep, there's that's one. it. You're right. Good eye. It doesn't look like it's straight. I think I thought I saw one to the left. Yep, there, there's there one. There it is, right there by the chair. Uh, the What's chair. And then there was a couple that were, yeah. There's oh, one, there's one right there. now that we know. All right, so that's the picture. So the bounds are in. Okay. What's the orange stuff in the backyard there? Pumpkins? I don't know. Yeah, pumpkins. Yeah, and that was a condition Mike had on this project. You have to you have to compost, compost your pumpkins in the wetlands in the back? I want native pumpkin growth. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's condition. Okay. I move we issue a certificate of compliance for 30 Ashley Place. Second. On the overwhelming photo evidence. All those in favor? Yay. Overwhelming. Awesome. Most time for us. All right. Bob, you're, you're just doing it. You complimented me, and then you're coming up with these nifty little sayings tonight. No charge for awesome. Free. Oh, I read one. I stole it from. Uh, what's that? Um, the, the troll lives in the. The troll. Yeah. One of the trolls. No, no. The, the I didn't know we had trolls. We have trolls. Yeah, the, I know. the famous uh, uh, animated. Troll. Trolls. What's his name? Just. I don't know any guy. trolls. It's Jump not Poppy. Head. It's Trek? Poppy's friend. Shrek. 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 He's an he's an ogre. He's an ogre. Yeah, he had me. Well, he's he's an ogre. I said ogre, right? No. I said no. troll. I'm sorry, he's an ogre. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm thinking I was of the movie thinking trolls. of trolls. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Celtics are down by one point with ten seconds left. I know. I I wasn't noticing that. All right. Orad, zero Annette Lane. Kimba has 42 points. Yeah, so this is um, pretty much a completed uh, <laughs> project. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Must be my age. So you guys remember this uh, project here? I went on it with uh, Mike's daughter, mm -hmm. Mike, and Becky. Becky, and somebody else is there, right? Dave. Oh, Dave. <laughs> Dave was there. It's not not memorable enough, Dave. Well, someone stole all the. All the, all the <coughs> Some little lady so, stole everyone's yeah. thunder on For the first day. time, for the first time visit, he wasn't a cute one. <coughs> for the first time on any visit, yeah. <laughs> Dave was having a hard time to get anyone's attention. Sorry, Dave. So, so anyways, we went through this process, and we had talked about it a lot, um, and checked out the wetland flags. There were a few flags that were moved, um, and next to those flags, there was a... R put next to those flags, uh, revised. And if the applicant came here tonight, I was going to verify where the data plots were uh, taken, but they are in the soil, uh, the soil uh, page. So I grabbed it off that. So I thought he had coordinates. The field data form. So they did. One uh, at WF twenty one. That's on. That's going to be on the north side of the project. So we had walked around here and changed a few, and that's very close. I thought it was I thought it was eighteen that where the data plot was, but it's over by twenty one. But we had changed nineteen because it's revised for nineteen R, and we had changed um, twenty four. Now it's twenty four R. Number five and five. Is this the, a new? I thought when they came to us last meeting, they had the this revised plan already sent to us, right? 
They did. Okay. This plan is not new. Okay. And as a matter of fact, it was created on October 21st, 2019, and revised on October uh, 22nd, so the very next day. So that was the day after our site visit. We were able to see it, and we talked about this at our meeting. Yeah. So this is not new information. I think we should, we, uh, we we're just verifying it. that we have all the flags correct. And so what I see is that. it's, although it's two separate wet wetlands, the flags are continuous across them, and it goes from 1 to 28, and good. Do we need to officially accept the plan or no? I uh, need to have a motion to issue. Yeah, so I would motion to issue, and, and uh, I'll motion, we probably close. Yes, we close. Yeah, yeah. close. So motion to issue and uh, accept flags 1 through 28 as shown on the up updated plan. Dave, you want to take that on? I think Nika's kind of worried about if she can remember it all. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't accept it. I she move might want that to we approve. <laughs> I move that we approve the you flags want to as Chuck mentioned. <laughs> Thank you about continuing Dave. as I finish but, this motion. No, and issue the ORAD for zero a net lane. Second. All those in favor? Administrator's report. So in my administrator's report this week, I got a call from uh, Eric Burkhart, and uh, I wanted to uh, just let the commission know. I have some pictures, but um, uh, Chuck, what? Where's Eric Burkhart from? Belmont Street. Burkhart. I'm not sure. Burkhart. What? Burkhart, is this? Yeah. Yeah. Being, right? Belmont Street. Oh. In Reading, where is he from? He lives on Belmont, 161 Belmont Street. Uh, that's where the project is. The project was originally an RDA for an addition and to grade out the back lawn. And he ended up putting in a uh, sprinkler system while that grading was happening. And uh, we, had, we had gone there. So hold on a second, let me get the uh, file up. I don't know if we can wait. 161 Belmont. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. I used to have help with this. Uh, Control Shift Plus. Yes, I did. Okay, there you go. So this is this is the back lawn, and if you don't recognize uh, the house from that picture, there's another one. And let's see. I want to advance. There. Does anyone recognize the wood pile? Oh, the hut like wood piles. Uh, yeah. On the left. If you've been to the house, you would recognize that wood pile. So that's it. the this is the lawn. Um, and this is the plan. And the plan that we looked at was done by Bill Manuel, who went out there and delineated the wetlands and it was um, a little bit hard to understand, but what they did is they put flags in and they measured the distance from the flags to where the proposed work was happening. So here's a blow up of the, of the plan that he submitted to, to me and this area here is the house. This is house and the fence is going to come off the side of the house. Obviously this is a grass area. There was a hedge along this area, and the wetland starts down here. He wanted to put his fence along this. So here is the uh, shed, and the wetland starts somewhere like just at the front, just, just behind it a little bit, somewhere in that area. He's off that area. We typically allow fences right up to the wetland if it's grass and they're not cutting down shrubs or trees. Fence is right around here. Two openings, gate here, gate there, and um, he would like us to add it uh, to the existing uh, request for determination of applicability, which we have approved already. And so it didn't make any sense to have him do another permit for this. I did speak to him on site about this fence, and I've looked at where it's la uh, laying out. And my recommendation is that we approve this and add it to the. Uh, 
uh, request. Um, if you have any questions, I'll did answer you, them. Did you mention to the uh, resident that, you know, that gate that goes between his yard and the, yeah, that back area is, you know, is not for bringing out waste leaves and sticks and. I did. Well, I, I also would be there. <laughs> So I did uh, mention that, but not when we were talking about this gate. So when he was grading out the back lawn, they had like a small something or other there. Uh, maybe it was a bobcat. And there was a pile in this area here and a pile down along this area here. I asked him to remove them, and he did that. But those were, they, to me, they looked, there was some new stuff on it, but for the most part, it was historic. So, he didn't strike me as someone that was actually throwing his own stuff out there. Um, He's cutting it up, stacking it up in huts. And I will send him an fire. email and remind him of that tomorrow just so that is definitely taken care of. But I, I don't think that that's what's happening on this site. Um, like I said, that site, that area seemed to be historic. Uh, he did say he wanted to <coughs> set up a fenced in compost area back there. It's fine. I don't have a problem with the fence. I don't either. So what do you got? Do I hear we just got another no, no problem. <coughs> they just no got charge for what? <coughs> no puppy. No charge for awesome, baby. No charge for awesome right here. Yeah. No charge for awesome. <laughs> Going once. Going once? <laughs> okay. Oh, wait a minute. I'm on the wrong picture. Sorry. And if Eric, you're watching, I apologize, but I have to do this. How about that wood pile? Bob? I thought it was on the left. Is Can I get a no charge? Did you stack that? No. <laughs> Great job. It's like two that's, of that's taller than Chuck and I. <laughs> that is. <laughs> yeah, my God. It's an insurance hazard. The, the only problem with that is. Do I hear a motion? I yes. move. I move. We uh, add the fence and and piles removal as part of the um, RDA, the negative RDA already issued. Second that. All those in favor. Charge for awesome. Charge for awesome. Yeah. 30 Ashley Place, Eric Berthar. Now we are down to Bills. some dues. Mike, can you lead us through the dues and the bills? We've got some, a couple bills that are due. MACC, $777. Yeah. Oh. Is there, is there a, uh, and a certain amount of money that the, every commission spends and then it's so much per member over and above that so so uh, they used to really get into who's on it so much per person but what they do is they charge you per um, the commission is a flat rate whether you have seven or four so that's that's all there is to it so that's one charge 777 and in this town, based on the mean annual income, it's seven hundred and seventy. And I don't. I I called. I was curious about it one time, because it's it's a lot less in other towns, and but it has to do with population and whatnot. So it sounds like it's a here. It says there's sixty dollars per person. So, but sixty dollars per person that is either um, that's not on the commission. So if we wanted to give uh, this benefit to someone else or an associate member or if the chair or no if, the, if I wanted to get part of the benefits or if there was an, uh, an assistant administrator so that's 60 additional dollars and then also if you want to get <clears throat> on the uh, so they have a handbook and if you want to have access to the handbook online you would have to pay even more gotcha. Don't you have an assistant administrator? I do. I do. I do. I actually just hung a mirror in my desk <laughs> area. And uh, that's what that's who the assistant the, is. Could have gotten you a better looking. <laughs> yeah, the assistant's <laughs> awful, a lot, awful lot better looking than I am. But, uh, but there's no charge for awesome. So. There's, yeah, it's, <laughs> is it a real mirror? I can't. He's not following it. I'm giving him the I'm, signal. No, he's I, not I'm, saying it. I'm, he's not popping up. Celtics must have lost. I'm perched. I'm just waiting for the opportunity to leave. Okay. I, move, I move we pay nope. the 
777 yeah. bill to MACC. And that comes Second. in every year. And All those in favor? It's I hope it's hard to say no. Send it in weekly, We've got one for water and sewer. Water sewer bill. This is our standard oh, bill yeah. for uh, Pearl Street. 17 and something or other? 1971. Rates went up? Mr. Lemon added that to the next door neighbor's bill. Great. We want to. <laughs> Drainage costs a lot in this town. We want to. I move yeah. we pay the drainage bill for Pearl Street. Second. All those in favor? And then a Horsley Witten. We see the Horsley Witten bill for uh, site walk inspection, uh, site inspection, a review of the notice of intent, uh, written analysis, a working session. Hearing attendance and peer review, and it's for one thousand four hundred and seventy-five dollars. Let's go back and, and I, yeah, I actually set up a spreadsheet so I know we have enough money. Uh, and I did want to make a call to them because I think that the the review of the notice of intent was on our first our first bill, so I wanted to ask them about. Pending Chuck's review, I, I move we pay the invoice for Horsley with. Second. All those in favor? Chuck $1,475. Are they done with scope at this point? No, nope, they're in the done. process of talking to so the engineer, Ryan. Yeah. And, yeah. When, when are we? Name, uh, Street. Street. Andy Street was Andy here tonight. Street, sorry. And um, he, before the meeting, he told me that they're hoping to get to our January 8th meeting, but they may not. And um, if, if the holdup might have been our, our engineering needs to be after Horsley and Witten finalized with them. And they're going to develop a plan, put it together, run it past, you know, Ryan and the, the engineering team here in Town Hall. And then there may be additional tweaks that's needed. Although I did talk to Ryan and he was, uh, he, he liked the review from Horsley Witten. He said it was very thorough. And he, didn't think you would have too much more to add to it. They had really picked up a lot. They did. So, uh, well, I hope I hope we're Janet Bernardo uh, did the review. She's done it. She does it for many towns. I hope, I hope we get those that report from them well in advance of the meeting, so we have a chance to really look at it thoroughly before the January eighth. Well, so okay. customarily, well, well actually, continue. not even. It's not even a custom. It's in the regulations right. that it has to be five days prior to the meeting. It doesn't so. stop most people from just showing up in here. Right, because I know. Know once they're here, I'm not in charge. You guys are. I know. Okay? I know. And if you want to ex not accept it, don't, you know, be like Putin when they were trying to hand him the summons there. He was like, mm, just put it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and the last meeting, we didn't, you know, they wanted to update us, but we didn't really. Yeah, you need to. Yeah, like I said, I'm not. I'm not stopping him here at the meeting. It's, that's your, you know. I'm your administrator. When they call, I know what the rules are. It's not here in time. Sometimes there's an extenuating circumstance, and I'll ask Mike or Becky what to do. But I mean, that's that's pretty smooth. But in the in the meeting, if it's not enough time, I I wouldn't even get into it because it seems like that's hard to stop once you start talking about some new piece of material. All right, so that was three bills. That's a, as many as we can handle. I know, there's never been three bills. Minutes for approval. Chuck, I looked at the minutes and the only, they looked fine except, um, except um, just a little <clears throat> point here is that you update us on 26 mile post road. So you want me to update you now on 20 Yeah, oh. uh, and otherwise I have no okay. comments. Okay, so I think uh, that I wanted to update the commission on 26 Mile Post Road, just saying that um, I had already told you that I'd gone out there and looked at the site and there was a trampoline <coughs> down kind of where we had the quote unquote 25 foot no disturb area. The no disturb was supposed to be unmowed and left natural 25 foot natural zone of vegetation and the applicant had a different opinion about mowing around the trees um, than I think was stated in the order of conditions. So uh, with the snow and whatnot, this is really 
been on the back burner. They're supposed to do a report. I don't believe I received the report yet. Um, anyways, but when I get that report, I'll be looking at this again. But the, a couple of things is to decide whether that's a zone of natural vegetation, which is planted with trees, or is it, are you gonna be able to allow mowing around each one of these trees? And you, you're gonna need to go out there. Someone's gonna need to go out there. I think it was just me and Becky. Someone from the current makeup of the uh, commission needs to see. I went out with you guys. Were you there? Yeah. yeah. Still wanted to Maybe you, you were supposed to actually, do, as I recall, when we were there, you wanted them to uh, site, uh, situate all of the plantings that they did on their plant to see if that corroborated with what they were supposed to plant yeah. according to their order conditions and yeah. also take the the um, the the, uh, the trampoline down but also to demarcate where they were going to be mowing and not mowing down in the lower part of the, uh, the yard. Okay, thanks Dave. Oh, did we make a motion? I don't think those need a motion. Minutes? Oh, I thought we were talking about what we were just talking about. Well, that was, it was, you just want to update. I right? move we approve the minutes of November 13, 2019. Second. All those in favor? All right, I got two items left here. The first one, I emailed Chuck uh, uh, three weeks ago about a parking situation at Perfectos. Um, there continues to be a Mercedes parked in between the dumpster and the building. Mm -hmm. um, I had sent Chuck a, a, a picture and I mean, since that time, I've seen the same one parked there over and over and over again. I think we've sent the same picture. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I told Chuck at this point, you know, I, you know, my opinion is we need to send s at, at least, at the very least, a, a warning saying, look, we, we've seen this there. It's the same car. When he came before us, now has <laughs> there we go. Which is the left there, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's there enough that Google uh, also got it. Um, you know, I, I, he came before us. There was supposed to be a project completed, and you know, I think ultimately this. I, I don't know exactly what what happened, but it didn't go through planning or they didn't want to go through planning and so who knows if the rest of what he was proposing to do is, is going to be complete but he was supposed to put a chain between that that gate and the fence and he wasn't supposed to park there and he was very clear that he understood that he wouldn't park there and that um, he was going to take care of it and that he was going to take care of it um, it's supposed to be a removable bollard so yeah. they can plow on the winter side well, it was going to be a removal back. bollard, but that was too expensive, so then we allowed it to be a chain. Oh, that's just permanent. We've well, kept on, so. We kept on downgrading what it needed to be. Ultimately, the car can't be there. I, and uh, I think at the very least now, I'd, I'd like to send a, a, a letter warning, whether that's, I don't know, what do we call it? Do we have an official term for this, Chuck? It's not a... Hey, I'm going to call it a violation, a violation notice. Violation. We have a violation notice, or we could send them an enforcement order. So those are the two choices that we have in front of us today. Criminal parking, right? Well, I, th I think the thing is, I think the violation notice is that we've passed that. Because he's been notified and notified. It was before us. The owner of that business actually assured us that no one would be parking in that area. That hasn't been the case. Many, many times I'll go by there and that silver Mercedes is parked to the left of the dumpster. By the way, people that are slinging coffee and, 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 and muffins in that business are not driving a Mercedes Benz. So, you know, it's someone that's of a managerial level or above. Also, to the right of that dumpster, there are many times that I've gone past there, there have been four cars parked there. We allowed, after the fact, 
possibly three cars to be parked there, one immediately to the right of the dumpster, and two possibly between that car and then the fence. Many times I've gone past there and there have been four cars parked to the right of the dumpster. So it's not just the silver Mercedes, it's also other people that are parking to the right of the dumpster, which was something that was made very clear when the owner of that business came before us and the plan was made to put chains or ballwoods or whatever they were going to put there. So um, the fact that the chains and the ballwoods aren't there, I don't know what the status of that is. I know that when they went to planning, that something was changed at planning that kind of put a fly in that ointment. But the I, fact I, of the matter remains, yeah. they knew very clearly what our expectations were and it w was not to park where they're parking and parking continuously in that, that space. So, so, Dave, from the standpoint of your suggesting to issue an enforcement order, and f I mean, so we have the authority to issue enforcement and fine. Uh, violation comes with a, just a notice. Well, I, I, don't, I don't understand our process, our, our, what the difference between a violation, I mean, besides us just calling it two different things. What yeah. the difference between enforcement, well, enforcement order, whatever order. we do, it can't be too threatening and then have no real clout. Mm -hmm. So you need to manage it up to the point where you can actually exercise some kind of a well. And and I think to you know, Dave, I know I've heard you bring this up before, but when was the last time we actually reached out to Tim? I think we've we've been we've been loose and soft on this and, and actually notifying him and saying you can't. We're seeing this. You can't do it. We've already talked about it. You can't do it. I, I think. A lot, a lot of time has gone by that we've just been letting it happen. Devin, you notified him, Chuck? No, I, I know have. that the last time And I he's returned my calls instantly it. and said, hey, that's, uh... The last time I sent him said, text, uh, I'll take care of it right away. Him. So he's not, so. you know, shy about... He's just yes, he's calls. Calls. He hangs up and doesn't think <coughs> about it. Because when are you going to drive no. by again? I don't think he's working there. I mean, I don't want... I guess oh, I'm, I'm not just like the constant sure. defender guy, but uh, I don't think he's working there. I think it's someone else's car, because when I've called him, he's said I'll I'll give him a call or something like that. But we're so what I want is I want to because yeah, so I have no problem writing this, and I've written them before. I just want follow through this time. I mean, I don't. Th let's talk about what's the next step, yeah. and right. and then the final step, and then what if what doesn't happen, you know? Well, and well, then let's follow through. Well, so that brings up an interesting point. And I guess my question is, are we empowered? Not that we're going to do this, but I mean, we can't just get down there and decide to put a chain on this guy's property between two points because it's... We, we issued an order, and he's not following the order. We, have, we have the right to issue violations and warnings and fines for not following that order. And, and that, that's fine, but we, we, we're not certainly... We have no jurisdictional authority to go in there and actually install something. So all we can do is find it. But that's okay. If we're going to do that, let's do it. I mean, don't threaten it. If we're going to just say even this is the last verbal, this is the last written warning, if we see the guy down there again, we're going to send you a fine of X number of dollars. And if it's a compounding fine or a daily fine, a weekly, monthly fine. You can keep on scrolling down, Chuck. Yeah, I don't know. So, so. You see this thing with 300 right here. Yeah, but we have like a table similar to each day of the violation. <coughs> but we can, here, this, this we can provide schedule. with the enforcement order every notice that you all have sent to Chuck saying, hey, I saw it here on this day. Hey, I saw it here on this day. And we could have a whole record of times that we observed that the violation was happening and how long and how many times before we've warned that person. Um, and you know, we can, we should, and we absolutely should document the basis for our enforcement order in this. I think that's critical that this enforcement order is well written, well documented, because it's that documentation that's gonna become the teeth. That we have evidence, <coughs> the violations have been ongoing, and it's got to stop and you're in violation of this, this, and this of your order of conditions, and we have the authority to impose fines starting on this date unless the, 
the action stops. Yeah. So we do need to really document this especially. If we want a result, and if we want to take this to a next step of collecting fines, because that is the next step, if it continues. Can I, can I ask a question? Not to be contentious, but my question is, we already have the basis for the action, correct? <laughs> so rather than convolute it and make it too complicated, say, just basis the attached, we here, hereby will resolve your lack of compliance with fines commensurate on this date. Period. And so as of this date, now we get down there, the car's going to be gone. We have, right? I think, basically you're talking about how does this order, how does this enforcement order get written? And how, like, how do we start to put in the conditions that they have to meet? Is there a criteria for doing this? I mean, there are steps that you have to follow, like step one, two, three, and four before you can actually bill them or find him? Um, that's my question. If there isn't, then you can send him a bill for non-compliance and see what he does. Let him dance on the fact that I don't want to pay this. Well, what are you going to do about it? Because once he gets the bill, he's going to go, oh, they really are serious. What we, I think, if I can, based on my memory, what I think Chuck has been told by um, officials in town government is don't write an enforcement order if you're not legitimately ready to engage town council and the full force of law to go after this person, right? Don't don't write a violation if you don't want to, if you're just going to uh, resend it later. So if, if, it's, if we give him a $300 fine, he's got to pay it, and we can't back down from it. Okay, well, I don't have a problem with that. That's all, that's that, all I was okay, that's uh, And that was my point. We don't send the letter if we're just if this is just a paper tiger, then we're wasting our time. But I assume that the, the terms and conditions of, of the situation down there are enforceable. I mean, I got to believe the town council knows that these these things aren't written because they're fairy tales. They are. Okay. I, I think. Well, I mean, Chuck, you tell me if it's been different. I think to this point we've been. It's been a a, a friendly discussion of some. Somebody points it out, and Chuck gives him a call, and he calls back. I don't know that we've ever sent an official, you're not going to, like, get it out of here. You, like, I, I don't think we've ever, I don't know. To have, well, I guess what I, was, what I was trying to make sure I was comfortable with, Mike, and again, we have the gun, so if we pull the trigger, are we just shooting blanks, or do we have actual, I mean, this is an actual document that we can enforce. It's, it's backed up by town council. The, the Board of Selectmen aren't going to undo the fact and say, no, maybe we'll just let this guy ride up this one if they even get involved, which I don't think they would. You know, I mean, if this is enforceable and, you know, we, we send him one more letter and say, you know, up to this point we have, like Anika says, if we, if we document the fact that we know he's done this, somebody has parked there on numerous occasions and say this stops now, period. The next letter from us will be an enforcement action of Fine. this for $300. Yeah. That, that's and every day we see it, we'll every day we see the car parked there, it'll be an additional three hundred dollars. Yes. And you watch and see how fast he moves it. If that's all we want him to do is move it. Or so, not and, it. so I would ask, um, just looking at these fine schedules, his failure to failure to comply with uh, with any order of conditions uh, or determination, and that starts with twenty five dollars. That's F. Failure to comply with any order. He has an order of conditions. He's, he's. This is where yeah. he's at, at this point. Um, I, I think. I think you're right. I think. I think our warning needs to be, the first occurrence we see this is. I think we need to give him a schedule. The first occurrence we see this is 25. If if I think, we do have the. You know, just. And then if we see it again, we're going to send him a. 50. Uh, and, and then. No, no, no. no. It's, then you. Well, I don't see where it says then the next step is 50, but I do see that. But just knowing the process, then you might say, look, I'm going to send you a, um, a B, a failure to promptly comply with the enforcement order. So send him the enforcement order yeah. okay. stating another deadline date, and if he doesn't make that, then the three, the 300 or, or no more than $300 fine. 
that well, could be a fifty dollar fine, or it could be a three hundred. Okay, well, let me play the devil's advocate. Send the, the enforcement order out to say he's got till January first to start complying with this order. No, I would I would make it immediately. Yeah. Upon it's, the day of the, it's the day of the letter. And send it registered. Yeah. The, yeah. So somebody there has to sign for it. We know he got it. That's oh, the yeah, thing. of course. So so day day twenty. Day 15, if we send it, day 16, somebody goes there and there's a car parked in that spot. We do what? We send them the fine? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I think it. We send them a fine and a letter saying, here's, you know, here's what it is. Future, you know, here's an enforcement order with that, with the fine for, in accordance with 10F. 10F. So Am I picking the right one, Chuck? Yeah, 10F. And then future, future violations will be failure to promptly comply with an enforcement order. 10B will be $300 each time we see this moving forward. So send 10F so guys, now. Okay. Well, I guess my whole question is, do you have to start at $25? That's what it looks like. I think we do because, okay. because seems like his first violation would be failure to failure because we haven't issued any sort of enforcement order. Failure to comply with the order of conditions, which says he's... Which says don't none part of us want to be hard asses, but the fact is, had we noticed this the first time and sent something the first time, like Mike said, so he might not be parking there now. I just thought it's... So um, he has three years to comply with the order of conditions. But he can't. Part of the order was. But to he can't stop be in violation of the order. In, so we'd have to make sure that it that the order of conditions has a date on it, which I think it did. Um, but if it doesn't, then we're then we're. But can you pull out the order of conditions right now? No, it is. So because we need to really make sure we understand that language very clearly. But yeah, he has three years to comply with a requirement of. It expires. Unless we put a date on it. Years. Yeah. The term of an, an order of conditions is valid typically for a three year window. So then what For happens? completion. Then it expires. And if they haven't gotten the work done, then they don't have approval for any of the work. So, Chuck, Under that order. So, really, in this theory, because I almost throw out the whole post and and chain and all that stuff. I mean, the whole reason he came before us in the first place was 10G, right? He wasn't complying with his certificate of compliance. Right. right? That's really where he's falling under. The, the, the whole order of conditions was a way to address the fact that he wasn't a, a, a following his certificate of compliance. Right? Aren't we in this 10G where... The, the first project, the project was complete, we gave him a certif certificate of compliance, and then right away they started parking there. Right. And then he came before us and said, well, I need some sort of reasonable solution. And so we worked with him. Right. And did another word of conditions. I think what we're really going to is this 10G, right? However, I think if you go back and you look at it. Because we gave him, he has a valid order of conditions to do the work. So I just see, looking back at the order of conditions, if it has a, you he have has to do this by date certain, and he didn't comply with that date, then we could do 10F. But when failure to comply with a, with a certificate, of, certificate of compliance, that would have been valid up and until we issued the second order of conditions. We also had the owner here. Yeah, why would you go? You couldn't go back. The owner in here, and the owner assured us that... Because it's, con I guess it's in a funky gray area. It's contingent on, that. our order of conditions was con contingent on like you can't park there anymore right and the owner assured us in the meeting here in person that they were were not going to continue to park there and when the, his engineer was here we had assurances from the engineer that that those barriers were going to be put up within a certain period of time um, and it wasn't wasn't three years it was within months that they were going to be done I don't think they ever promised that hasn't been there for three years. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm unsure. So they never received. So they did receive their certificate of compliance, or did not? They did, didn't they? Yeah. They received. They the did. So now they've received their certificate of compliance, with this, which essentially said they've that never. says that the order of conditions was effectively met. Right. However. Then they then it was noticed after the place opened because the place. That there wasn't really open when that was issued, that they were parking in these areas. <clears throat> so now they're we contacted in the a bunch of times, and the solution to that was he was going to get another order of conditions to 
allow parking in certain areas and block off certain areas along with the snow plow, snow removal. So know. there's an open border conditions. Yes. Correct. <clears throat> That allows him. That would allow him to develop that spot to the right, Not develop true. that spot to the right, and block off in entirety the spot to the left with chain. So there's no parking there. But in the winter time, this is why we needed the bollards that were removable. In the winter time, you had to push the snow somewhere, sure. and that's where you. So take that chain down, take the bollards down, and it could go in that area. So it was crafted right, and the thing about the planning is what, what I heard was that he wanted to change this again because he didn't want to put in pavement or vertical granite curbing or some other stuff, and he wanted to just, can I do less than I said I was going to? But in this town, you need, uh, you need to, I guess, I guess he would have to go back and get permission to do less. So essentially, I think Mike's right. They're in violation of their certificate of compliance because they've already received. They at one point in the history they met the, they met this. We gave them a certificate of compliance, what which does that said, mean, uh, which said that they had met the conditions of the order, right. and now it's effectively closed. Like the order, like there's no outstanding issues that we have to deal with. There's no agree lingering. Up to that point, yeah. But and so was, now we're past that, and so it's a violation. It's a failure. It's a B. Oh. You, you send an enforcement order. It's, it's a new. It it's stands a new on enforcement its own, order. Except. But they're in but violation I don't, I don't, of the original conditions. Right. But what I why I don't agree is because we ha he has right. an order of conditions to do this job that is open for three years. But so I see that order of conditions similar to if, if we issued an enforcement or if we had issued an enforcement order, generally the process is you come in and right you you close out the enforcement and then you do a oh, do a new order of conditions. We very generously just didn't give that enforcement order. He just came in and gave a new order of conditions of what the solution to the problem would be. All right, but you can't go back. You can't. Re you can't. Well, no, that's still a, that. That original certificate of compliance is still part of the the planting that's shown there. That's still it, part of the requirement. That's closed out. You can't go back into that. So, so it could be F, F though. I'm, now you've lost me. We had an order of conditions to, he, to he build to the build the project. He lived up to the letter of conditions, right? Years. Right. We right. gave a certificate of compliance, and that's gone. But it's all of the requirements that were in that original order, order still have no, no, to be No, no, there was no requirement not to park next to the dumpster. We didn't even know that was going to happen. Oh, that was not in the original order no. of conditions. No, but the, but there. I mean, what what did it say? So when did we decide you couldn't park there? When he started parking there, we said, "What are you doing?" And, you know, and then he's so, and that's it where we got into the second order. Oh, okay. So, I mean, it's so either a violation. It's either a violation, or it's failure to comply with an order of conditions. If we put a date certain to get this project done, that that's sooner than the sooner than the um, the order of condition expiring. I don't I don't know how you can go back to the original one, okay. especially when there's something in front of it. You know, like it's blocking you because you. One says, I think we're like one says you can't work in the 25 foot zone and the 30, and you can't do structures in the 35 foot zone, but that one's been closed out. And a new one says, yeah, you can, and these are the things that we're going to allow. So we can't do anything to him. No, I've oh, got a babysitter duty then. Does he do you really? Life. Well, I've said event, and I'm said ten. All right, tell you the truth. Understood. Thank you, Carl. Um, so we won't see you before the holidays. So Merry Christmas. Thank you, too. Thanks, Carl. See you January Take care. Something. Eight or six, whatever it was. Sixth, right. Oh, next, next week. Same thing. I can't believe Oh, that's right. Visit Monday. Monday. Yes. I'll be there Monday. No time. Yes, I put in the phone. Right. Siri knows. Okay, sorry. Yep. Okay. What are we supposed to do? All right. right. Well, if it's, if it's on one of these. I, th I think we have to concentrate on either G. Is that the one? No, F. I think F. F, then. I think F, because as you said, Chuck, the, the standing order of conditions, 
it has to be met for the, it expires, like the conditions are ongoing in perpetuity. That's why they We're talking about the sort of We're what he said. The second one. The second order of conditions. That's which allows yeah. the parking. Because I'm, I'm telling you, there is no standing order of conditions on the first one that says you can't park there, because we didn't expect that to happen. Okay, so this second one. But then we brought him in and basically said, what are you going to do? You can't park there. Yeah. How did we have any sort of, of any sort of authority on that? If well, we would have prevented him from parking there based on the first order of conditions and our regulations that you can't have a structure or altering the resource area or altering the buffer zone without a permit. That was, you know, that's what he would need to do. I think... I, I think we can fit it on 10, 10 F, because ultimately, just as Dave said, he came yeah. to this within that for that order. He came to us and said, "Yeah, I'm, 10 F I on, will the, on the second one. I will handle it." Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was yes. he. Took, he came in to talk to us and said that we would not park there long before they ever received the second order conditions. The owner came before us and assured us that they would not park there. But I, and I agree, and we have video evidence of that, but I want to make sure we have some official signed legal document that specifies what the conditions are and what, was, what, what the commission signed off on. You know, I go through, so, I'm sure we documented this. I'm yeah, sure it's in that the we were going to go out we were not going to allow any parking to the left side of the dumpster. And then there was going to be three spaces that were going to be allowed to be parked on um, to the right of the dumpster. Um, and the, the chain would allow, be allowed to be taken down after November 1st yeah. for snow storage. So failure to comply, I just feel like I would almost rather send him a, a, an enforcement order and never mind about the two out there that he, he hasn't kind of, I, I, I would right. feel. What two out there, the two orders? The two orders that are out there and trying to figure out what's going on with that. I, I mean, I he's agree. definitely doing, there's definitely a violation going on. I, I think I think it's, we can very easily send an enforcement order that says, and and then our. our Build it, send it for an enforcement order put some date certains on it when things have to happen, and then we can do failure to comply with the enforcement order that we just sent out to him, and then, and fine. Yes. Yep. I, I, yeah, I think that's starts with just an enforcement And, and this order. is the starting point, right? We're, we're, forget about everything else. I think he has one an enforcement order. I think I sent him one already about this same thing. Was it truly an I enforcement think it order? I because we had this conversation before. I thought we've just like about step called. two. Or did we just issue a letter? I, I don't know, but it's Please. it'll be easy enough to put something together, and I can Please get it out tomorrow. Please look into what was done, so that there's a good paper trail documenting. You, right? you know, the one thing I have to I tell you that I didn't think about oh. was, yeah, I, I, I can't, yeah, but so we allowed the snow plowing. Because, and I never thought that, I never just kind of occurred to me that they would push the snow far, so far back, because no chain in the wintertime yeah, for snow plow, park that park. it creates a parking spot on its own. I don't think we, we discussed that we though, and discuss we talked that. about lifting it up over right. that. We <laughs> yeah. talked about that. Like you that. couldn't go, you couldn't go a certain distance in the same way out over on the other when side. When dumping in the, the Walker's Brook, we discussed. Chuck, I would. Yeah. It's not Walker's Brook. There's this. There's a like. There was an area well, that had a whole bunch of plantings. Yeah, yeah. the, the fact is, is that those water. chains it's are green. removable. So yeah, Smith Oil, yeah. the same water. Yeah. Yeah. Dumping it over yeah. with removable chains doesn't make any. I don't. I'm not following you guys well, because we have removable the, chains. The, and you're saying no. We required him to dump it over. No, then that would have been permanent chains. So I'm not. I can't buy into that. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. Because we I, we it, the the. The system that we were planning on using got simpler and simpler. Maybe they were permanent chains on the left-hand side. No, I think that right was off limits side. altogether. No, there was both sides. There was a, there was a chain on the left-hand side and a chain on the right-hand side. Correct, but the one on the left-hand side was permanent. I don't think and so. that's where the dumping over it came from. But the well, ones on the right side were removable. Right. Well, yeah, 
Yes. Um, actually, I think we, we said that they could take both of them down yeah. as of November 1. That's my recollection. Okay. For snow storage. So, Chuck, if yeah, you can come up with a timeline for this, of like what our paper trail is. What's a good is? timeline? Is, does anyone I think you can do you this job to now? That, you told me that you sent him an email back in the summer. I did. Last summer. Well, and he had, he had a contractor call me, yeah. and it sounded like things were going to move along, and then nothing. So, I mean, just that's, that's his notice. He's already been put on notice. But is that no, was that... Was that email saying you can't park there? Was that email saying what's going on with the project? When what is what's going to happen? I think it's okay to stop from an enforcement order. I think, yeah. I think okay. then we need when, to start when do you Do you think yeah. he can do this, get these things in? I mean, definitely can do it now. Stop I don't think parking they're parking right away. It's not frozen. To me, to me, getting it in, he's got his timeline. I can't really change that. What's I, the timeline? But, but he can't park there. Starting, month? starting, starting this month? Starting now. Starting this, the, the date he receives this letter. To me, it's it's basically getting some Schedule 40 pipe, welding an eye ring to it, Just and then getting it. a chain with one of those. You can get those things that like unscrew yeah. and whatever right. that's called. Like he can Carabina. do whatever he decides. I mean, but to I'm do. just going just through it because because me, it just so it seems like it's almost so simple. I don't think he needs he needs the Schedule 40 pipe. I think he needs to to tell if it's. Whoever it is, the person that's parking in this spot, you cannot park there, and and we will be. Oh, fine so you're you you're saying don't park there, not do the work. Yes, uh, my my it's take the on the enforcement order spot. is is associated with the parking. Okay, we so can't this is only about we can't parking. make him do the project earlier than the three years. We gave him a, t a timeline to do it, right? I mean, I don't think we can go back and say, well, now we want you to do this quicker. I think we can say. You told us you wouldn't park there as part of this, right. and you're still parking there. I, I could have sworn that, uh, what's his name, Rucci, the, the engineer, gave us his assurance that that, that um, project would be completed within a couple of months. Even, even if they, right. even if he did, what would, like, I think that they have a very, whether it's their decision or not, this whole planning aspect muddies the water. Yeah. Which is why I think just a brand new enforcement order saying yeah. you can't park there. We know you've got this order of conditions. What about the other side? Yeah. And there can and only, and only can allow only, three on the other side. Only be three cars. Three cars, yeah. I mean, we have this documented, like what yeah. we asked him to do. Send him a copy of what was approved, and say we've gotten this many obs. Our own members have observed this many times in the last year that parking has continued. It stops, otherwise we will start fines. I think you just say on numerous occasions. Well, send me the send me the pictures you must have. Yeah. I'm still in you might have. Well, I don't know. I don't. You, I I don't maybe Dave. I do. Can you send me an email with pictures. Yeah. So send I, those I, to I, Chuck. You tell me. And Chuck, just keep it all into one file place. And I just, just, I sent it the day I saw it, I think. <laughs> I, I sent you the pictures. That was like three weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you sent them, I have them. Yeah. I just, I just didn't put them in a file. I, and I don't, I haven't taken more of them since then because I've got a lot. Well, we need one every day. Do you go to work that way? I, I will. Stop in for a bag. Oh, Actually, a picture. it's, it's, <laughs> no, I, I got this date here. That's part of the fine. It's September 20th. You can't get a so I have, there. send a, Send it for parking only, allowing three spots on the other side. No parking. And, no parking and on the it's effective immediately. Right. As of like the next day. Mm -hmm. And then if well, we see you parking there again, we're going to. If we'd like, well, we rather can say, say it's effective immediately, you should say in compliance with whatever, fines will start immediately. Since you've been. We have already told them immediately back, way back. So rather than repeat that, right. I would say fine start immediately for continued breach of this contractual arrangement or order. Failure, failure to comply yes. as of the, you know as of this notice, and if you, from this day forward will result in fines. Mike, uh, ongoing disregard for the order of conditions. Yes. Ongoing disregard I'll, I'll is my, a great way to put it. I think I'll. I'll send it to whoever wants to review it if they can get it back to me before, Take a stab and I'll have my way before the end of the day. I go, I'll send it out to everybody. But I'd like to review it, but honestly, I want to see the documentation backup of what he should have already known. 
like all those details, it, it, what, especially as I, it pertains to the parking question, in this are area. You gonna, are you going to review the paperwork fair leading up to this? I, mean, the, the last, I just the last want the piece that has to do with the parking that we voted I, I can on. I can review when. the open order of conditions, but I, I, I think all the other emails and whatnot that went out there were not demands and they weren't date certain, so it, it doesn't matter what they said. They, they had no weight. I agree. So well, there have been but, letters, But, but I guess to, to Anika's point, you could say, on numerous occasions we've tried to keep this friendly and you've, you've continued right. to ignore less than stringent, heavy-handed measures, and here's where we are, effective immediately, fines kick in, and we'll continue for as long as you park there. Period, end of story. I think that's good backup, but I don't know that we even need to say well, that. Well, if it's, if, assuming we have the teeth to do that. What I'm we saying is, for us order. to issue an enforcement order, we got to have the backup for it. Backup of what? The backup of the of how, what we've tried to do about it in the past, it's what measures we've order. taken. Yeah. Well, but let me ask you this. If you're going to find it and go to court, you right? probably need the backup from the enforcement yeah. order moving forward. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I, I the enforcement But that's the point. Is where, let's be realistic. Is, is this per, Do we expect this party to honestly get this enforcement order and go, oh my gosh, I better change this right now. You never know. He might. But but even if that's the case. He might not be very litigious. If might we're, say, if sure, we're okay. going to have fines in the future, that, I mean, that's where we need the backup. That's where we need the, on January 10th, we saw this. Here's a $300 Notify fine. him on January 10th or whatever, you know, December 11th. This, and, this came up. And this is a picture from December 12th and 13th and 14th and 15th. It was discussed at this meeting. 17th but, and, you know. But that's where this that's where the enforcement order, that's a, a new clean start. We can start. discuss it all we want. If he's not here, it's you know, we have to send him information. I, I think that just sending it out there, that has a possibility of resolving this issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just saying, it, it's just if we see a car from this date, Forward, we're just going to send you a fine. And you know what's to tell you it's a problem because the problem is, is, is there's absolutely no parking on that spot. My brother in law's barbershop or his business is right across the street. And he's got Starbucks in there and he's got a design company upstairs. Parking stuff. There's no parking in my brother in law's parking lot. Now they're all parking over in that drive through bank teller yeah. Yeah. next door. Yeah. And over by, was it Lashies that's right there? Or Why are they that? parking there? I mean, there's no parking in Perfecto. Has it people. always been the same way oh, across the street? Been, always been the problem. But, but now they're parking in my brother in law's parking lot and they're walking across the street to Perfecto's, which annoys him. And even the people that have that next strip mall, there are people watching for people parking their cars there that don't do business there. And they'll call some co tow, tow truck to come get them. I mean, it's, it's, it's really a shitty situation. But outside of Perfecto's, area. there's enough parking at the barbershop area. Like they're all set, they have enough parking for that those businesses there. Only with what those? No, the barbershop no, across the street. There, no, it's the, the Bank of America I think, overflow I think that, that so There's not enough there anyways and right. people are parking. Every time I go there to get my hair cut I have to park in Bank of America's yeah. drive through bank. Unfortunately Bank of America hasn't said no unauthorized parking. So I don't know if my brother in law pays them to be able to use the parking lot, which would make sense, but there's never enough parking lot. Yeah, someone's gonna get killed walking across the street to perfect those. I mean, that's that's a busy road. Well, then, then there's that. But that's what they do. I've seen them. So, in fact, matter of fact, I was sitting on my brother's chair and I looked right across the street and said, "Yeah, he should be parked there." I should get my camera and go click click. All right. A GoPro in my brother-in-law's window. He'd get him every day. All right. So I think we have a solution. Is it, um, what is the fine amount? The first fine. We're gonna go with thousand dollars. I mean, I think we this this the says failure standard. to comply with an enforcement order is three hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever the well, it says in the Wetlands Protection Act, up to not to exceed three hundred dollars per violation. So I'm sure this is taking from that. So yeah, but we've set other not we've set lower right. numbers for other violations, right? But you can also give one of those every day. Yeah. No, you can. And I think that's part of the notice that you know for each failure occurrence. to comply within an enforcement order can be a fine of $300 and can be issued one each day. And you know, here's, here's each the other violation. Thing about, think about this though. If he tells his employee, whoever's parking there, not to park there, he goes, look, on penalty of losing your job, nobody that works here parks there again. So the employees start parking in the parking spots that are available, 
So now customers are going to pull in there and park. They'll be there 20 minutes, and they'll leave, and they'll come and go. It's not a park. Like, I've, never, to, I've never seen any other car. To him to I've seen one other car. There's a, a, a SUV that'll yeah. go there. I've so you don't think a uh, parking lot's full of people wouldn't park there? Oh, no. I know I would. Not knowing that it was illegal to park there. I mean, if it was an open It doesn't spot. look like a parking spot. No, I think he's. I think it's up to him to make sure that no one's parking there. It's not up to st if he can't do the sawhorse in front of it or a little chain thing. Right. He's got to do bucket something. Five, five gallon bucket of but that's exactly it. I mean, this is why he has. No this is why he has an open order of conditions is to resolve that that situation. So I'll try right. to add that to so. it. So I'll do like a yeah. first draft. Um, I'll do? send it to you or send it. Well, I'll just send it to you. Okay, that'd be easy enough. And then we'll try to get it out by. Let's say two. Are you good with that? Do when, do, when do you finish with lunch? Around two or three or what? Lunch. <laughs> just send, send it to me. Yeah, I will. I'll send it to you. And do I need to like say, hey, I just sent something to you? <laughs> just send it to me. <laughs> I'll be looking for it for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is you can you can also just go in and do a search in your, your email to f see how many times you've already emailed them too. No, that's all. I, I mean, I was just kind of like going off what <clears throat> Anika said, which was at the, at the end of the day, if it, if it wasn't kind of like stop doing this, does it really matter what I sent them? Just if I said, hey, can you give me a call? I need something to, well, I guess something to talk to you about. <clears throat> yeah, I did when mention it a few times. When the owner was in front of us, we told them to stop. Yeah, but. No, I just, I, the whole purpose of coming up with some sense of a historic little like, bulleted list of okay he, he t promised it there right. um we emailed him there we talked to him on the phone then we got a dave saw it happen on this day mike saw it happen then he came to a meeting and Google, promised Google us picked it up on october yeah. promised us he'd do it and then his engineer <laughs> promised he'd do it i mean if we come up with this right. overwhelming thing and literally show him it to him and say we've been putting up with a lot here right. and we have documentation a million, like 50 times over, that this was going to get done and it's not. It's but, enough is enough. But you don't need that for enforcement. No, we don't, but it might. Oh, he could. He would. He could. But it might, it might get him to say, oh, damn, I can't get away with this anymore. I really got to do something about it. And I think, and it's just the I, age. Like that we but the age old issue fact is, will tell him that, that he can't get away with it. Get him in the pocketbook. It's, it's, if you send him an irrevocable yeah. fine, yeah. it's going to get his undivided attention. He's going to go, ooh. Yep. I guess now I really have to comply. Agreed. But then, okay, then there's two situations. He complies or he doesn't comply. And if, it, if he complies, we're on the way to resolving this. But if he doesn't comply, then we need that weight of evidence to move forward in another direction. No, if he doesn't so we comply, need that information then, then anyway. The evidence is coming in the future. It's only only evidence that we need is things going forward, right? We need the day. I, we'll, I disagree, but if we send an enforcement order saying you can't park here or in the future or you will be fine, do you think we need information? I'm, from I'm the not time? saying we only. I mean, it sounds like you're saying we only need information for now going forward. You know, all you have to say is, after several attempts um, and notifications to try and get this behavior to stop, it still continues to. Uh, it, it still continues. I just sent I just him hope a it works. violation you know. for 300 bucks and watch the shit at the fan. And he will come back and then you can have this conversation with him. And he'll go, uh, okay. You know? Yeah. All right, we've got one final thing on the agenda. Be kidding. Yep. You have Perfect 30 time seconds. I will. <laughs> Becky is <laughs> Becky has officially left us. She sent in her resignation. As of two days ago, right? As of two days ago, which means we no longer have a chair. Here we go. We sit in So, uh, generally, when uh, the last time this happened, Brian left. We did. We vote for. Chair and vice chair up until the next, you know, when we were reelected again, so June. Yeah, we do that once a year, right? Typically by the end of the fiscal year. June. Yeah, so we, June 30th. So we, we have a, a. Are you offering to. 
I, the chair slot? I am willing to fill the chair slot. So do we need a nomination to accept Unless your... somebody else would love to do it. I nominate Mike for you position as chair. I second that. All those in favor. You can vote for it, Mike. Yeah. Vice chair. Now, I, I know what you're thinking, kids, but I just want to let you know that with my vast knowledge and experience in this field, I still have to say no. I, I'm sorry. No charge for No charge for awesome. <laughs> no charge for awesome, man. <laughs> Dave or Anika? Dave? I think you would I both already, equally be great candidates. I already said no. I, and, and I said no before. I actually said, I actually said no before I actually re-upped. Uh, because I'm having my other knee replaced in a month. I know. And I have no idea. Thank you. I have no, yeah, no, I, 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 I re-upped in, in July for another three-year <laughs> term. So it's, I, I, I have no idea what's going to happen after this next one. Uh, could be worse, could be better. But I don't, I don't want to kind of leave that kind of as like a dangling Probable. thing that, yeah. You know that uh, that I don't, I don't want to commit myself and then not be able to follow through. So no, <laughs> no, no. Thank you. Um, so wait a minute. So we, so he says no. I say no. You've done it. I before. don't know if like so. There's you. Uh, uh, that's is that the any. way that you need to have a vice chair. Yeah. Just in case the chair can't make a meeting, somebody yeah. has to chair it. Good try. <laughs> I just asked. Yeah. Me too. Did, uh, did Robert's rules? Did, I uh, we, could, we, we, we can nominate him. Carl, but I'm, I don't know if his schedule allows. Or the you can no, nominate him and then vote him in absentia. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Carl. Yeah. Carl, yeah, we just voted yeah. you in. I mean, I, I, can sit, I can sit in as vice chair, you know, until June. And then, like to see. And reopen a full year. Yeah. And go for my associate position. Um, well, you know. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, I hope we have many associate members. I really, I really hope we get just get more. Do we? Do yeah. we have any, anyone in the in the pipeline? I'm I'm going to be missing the second know. meeting in January. I felt bad for Steve. Making that vice chair. So look didn't more we do the straw poll? And everyone was available for the next couple of months. Is this just new? Can I get your boss's number? God, yeah. You, I would love you to. Like it, Carl, maybe Kyle can make it. Because I think everyone said, yeah, they'll make it. Yeah. Okay, so, so I don't there know. There's one person in the pipeline, but so I don't know when they're going to do the selfishly vetting. nominate okay. myself. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm making a nomination for a need to I'll second. Accept, accept the interim position of vice chair until, until June. June. <laughs> I'll second. All those in favor. Thank you, Anika, for your uh, wow. dedication to the I'm going. And, and, and I, I guess, uh, I just want to say. Any other motions? Yeah, I just want to <laughs> just Close the meeting. state state out right out. Second. Out, Anybody's out front second? that. Um, um, Once it's public. Thank you to Becky, Becky. for all yeah. of the service that she gave to. Reading Conservation Commission. I know myself um, that I'm going to miss her, her guidance, in her, uh, in her knowledge. And her I humor. Mean, you know, in a what? In her, her humor. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you mean when she's spitting that back at you like a cat, ready to scratch your eyes out? Yeah, I'm going to miss that. <laughs> but you know, it's it like you fun. know when when Whoa. she when she comes out and says you know, uh, when you say what's that? Oh, that's that's. Ocala sensibilis, you know, and I'm like, in English, please. Oh, that's sensitive for, you know, and it's. I'm gonna. I'm actually truly. I'm gonna miss that yeah. because, you know, you say, what's that? And she'll give you the Latin name and then the English name, you know, right? You know, I, so, I respect that. I think so. I think so more, even more so to her dedication. No, no. She. Uh, I got a long reach, Lehigh Hayes, and even though, and tomorrow well, I, I is this, big, this how, big knucklehead's birthday. Oh, oh, look at that. Uh, Happy birthday, Bob. Don't look a day over 80. It's going to be here in a minute. <laughs> right, we're going. 
So anyway, close, thank you to Becky for, yeah. for her time and her, yeah. you know, in her, in her, uh, in, in her, and also her dedication. She, uh, I, you know, when I first joined the commission, we were switching chairs each year, and she's been on now. She was chair for three. I think we took for granted how much she was willing to really put forth and, and help Chuck. And, yeah, she was a lot. Of, she was good. I I always enjoyed trying to get a hold of her on the phone or emailing you always, her. Bob, you always enjoy trying motion. to get her goat too. <laughs> do I hear a motion? Move, please, right? Motion to adjourn. Second. Hit that gavel.